What's up this morning, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Stone Rain Productions, Headspace, and also Larum and Dylan Hunter and Gravis and Wells Boca Jellyfish and Ario. How is everyone doing today? I know we're streaming a bit earlier than normal. Spoiler season is always weird. Honestly, we might just change things in the future. So when there's a, a main set coming out and there's spoilers, we might just always stream early on Tuesdays. Because so what happened today is is essentially I, I started going to make this spoiler video and I realized no one had posted their cards yet. So there's like two rares or something and just a bunch of comments and uncommons. So, uh, so because of that, I decided, well, let's stream first and then I'll do the spoiler video, which will give a little more time for people to post their video. Cause we know there's supposed to be uh, a bunch of spoilers. Let me see uh, where to find wilds of Eldrain previews. I know there's a bunch of people on the on the schedule for today, so we should be getting a bunch of previews. We just haven't gotten them yet. We have them new subscribers, uh, subscribers Anna Bar and Krusty Beck. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have this huge list of people that uh, are supposed to be posting their spoilers today. Star City Games, TCG Player, uh, Weekly MTG stream coming up at one o'clock. So we just haven't got them yet. So I figured stream for spoilers after that. That's the plan for today. Before we get into it, I'm curious. What are we thinking about Wilds? Where are we at with Wilds of Eldraine? Do you enjoy MTG more or less because of when you stream? Uh, I enjoy streaming because I like hanging out with y'all, basically. <laughs> as far as actually making content, I think I make... I don't, I think that YouTube content, I like being able to edit it and like the, some of the stuff that goes into the process, but I really enjoy just like hanging out and having fun with y'all. So that's the part I enjoy about streaming. It's not so much about the game of magic when I stream as much as we get to hang out and have fun together. That's uh, that's the main point. Looking forward to my new rat friend. I mean, I think this set's looking pretty sweet. I still have some fears about like, Shieldred and the One Ring and some of the really busted cards. But I feel like if Wizards could design every set like this, we would end up in a position where standard and other formats were really, really good. I just see all these cards that look really, really strong, but only in the right deck. I think the most recent example is a Tale for the Ages. My God, is that card push two mana enchanted creatures get plus two plus two. If you're a deck that's getting a bunch of enchantments on your creatures and like a roll deck, that card's ridiculous. It's very, very playable. But outside of that archetype, it's really, really bad. Same with Archon of Wild Rose. I think that card's like busted, except only if you're playing like the Roll deck or the Go Wide Aura deck. Outside of that, it's pretty useless. So I'm seeing more and more of these like really good and specific archetype cards, which makes me excited about the future. I'm seeing less Shieldred style cards that are just like busted in every deck and gonna dominate the format. So I'm excited about where we're heading. I'm just worried about how long it's gonna take us to get where we're heading. But today we're doing something, uh, something kind of interesting. So so there's this special event on Magic Arena, <laughs> a special event where they have unbanned everything, historic no ban list, which means we can play the most broken cards ever. You might remember a year ago, I did this video with Phil where we played cards that were so broken they weren't legal anywhere with the idea being we played against each other and just tried to build the most busted deck possible and we had like channel decks and natural order elves and like just all this citadel storm all this ridiculous stuff well wizards actually made a event for this so this is you get all the cards for free and there's no ban list if the card exists on arena you can play the card in this event and you don't even need it in your collection so we're gonna see if we can do some really busted things today so Arena keeps, yeah, it was last August. It's actually been a whole year since that video went up. Uh, so Arena keeps giving me a message about when I read him wild cards for a set that is about to rotate for alchemy, but has no problem putting those rares that will rotate into my cold packs be grinding my gears. Yeah, the whole rotation thing's kind of kind of a mess. So let's do our reminders. And then I gotta ask you, chat, and if you have ideas, I'm willing to try any decks that you wanna try today. So if you have an idea for a, bu a busted deck, we can build it, we can try it. So I'm curious what will actually turn out to be the most busted. I think I know the answer and it's kind of sad, but we're gonna play a whole bunch of different decks. Blade Manor, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's Dark Ritual Tendrils is in the in the Citadel, in the Citadel Storm deck, and also Mind's Desire. This deck, I don't know how it actually like 
I don't know. I don't know how good it actually is, but if it goes off, my goodness, is it going to be sweet? So we're going to do some uh, some cool things. Jun channel. See, so I, I built... So this is Phil's Simic channel deck that he actually played in the video. So I have Phil's Simic channel deck. I built Golgari channel, which I'm curious. I don't know what the best build of, of channel actually is. How about channel into Realm Breaker, the invasion tree? Oh, wait, let me... Let me read Realm Breaker. Pay 10, sacrifice it, search your library for any number. Ooh, wait. So, <laughs> Realm, Realm Breaker channel, Maskwood Nexus. You need to spend, what, 13, 14, 17 life? And you get to put your deck into play? All the creatures in your deck into play? <laughs> I like it. I like it. That actually sounds hilarious. I wonder, do you think the best deck is actually just, like, burn watch it be so i built this deck oh we gotta do a reminder so i'm actually really hyped about this i built this deck based on a deck that someone shared with me and i feel like i wonder if the best deck could actually be kind of a deck like this where this looks like a modern a modern like tempo style deck even better maybe because of oko but i wonder if the best deck's actually like play ragavan play dragon rage channel or i get lightning bolts in my deck i get okos in my deck and i'll just like counter your busted thing and beat you down with <laughs> with the with the one drops that are so strong in modern so i'm actually really curious to see where this ends up going so reminders replay youtube that's we'd find all the old streams including this one in the future normal youtube i wish there were direct challenges allowed in this format there are you can you can do freeform direct challenges that's how uh phil and i recorded that video a year ago so it is possible to uh, challenge your french in this format yeah i've seen some loris like snapcaster control style decks there's probably a pretty busted control deck too like to fairy we'll look at the ban list in just a minute so uh, we'll look at the ban list and then we'll start playing games so reminders replay youtube that's where you find all the old streams including this one in the future cloudy music welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big scoop here for you thank you thank you thank you thank you normal youtube spoiler videos yesterday we played some zero rare blast bird Seeing if a zero rare deck could actually win on Arena, and it actually didn't do too bad. So tons of cool, uh, cool stuff coming up on the YouTube. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. Denavar, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. Like, maybe you want to anime omniscience because you're crim. Maybe you want to werewolf fox bodyguard because you like Restoration Angel. Maybe you need a spreading seas because you don't care about historic. Either way you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish if you get a free goldfish sticker just let them know you want what in your order us at the hooky up otherwise donations always appreciated and required a uh, merch page token t-shirts playmats can we support the stream and the channel on the site anyway so this format here are the cards that are banned so the best deck in this format will not necessarily be built around banned cards but it seems pretty likely that it will involve some of these banned cards so this is the ban list these are the cards that we cannot play uh we cannot normally play with that we can play with in this event so chat what jumps out to you is being especially degenerate especially busted especially abusable in this wonky format so okay here's here's big ones for me so the most broken thing in the history of magic i would say is fast is fast mana fast mana i think is the most busted delphi guru yeah ragavan i don't know why it's on this list other than wizard slacking with updating their uh, their website but ragavan is normally banned delphi guru welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super chat thank you thank you thank you thank you i think channel might be the strongest card on this entire list just because it's two mana make like 19 mana or something which is absurd dark rituals busted demonic tutor finds the other busted cards which is busted memory lapse i'm curious if there could be a control deck in this format you get like swords to plowshares you get unbalanced to fairy uh, time raveler you get oko so you could build some sort of like uh, money pile oko omnath uro to fairy just like money pile in historic winotas unbanned which is kind of ridiculous trickery is probably pretty busted uh, even though even though like trickery you know it's like uh, it's it's very gimmicky but it also does just do its thing very consistently there could be some sort of like extra turn deck nexus is on the table uh, we also have wilderness reclamation back you would also have time warp we have to fairies and pieces to go with it counter spells for protection maybe a cheat agent of treachery into play with winota so there are a lot of possibilities so i think what should we start with I mean, so I got a bunch of decks that I built, and we also can, 
We also can build decks as we go, as uh, as we want to, as we uh, as we want to. If we have some ideas, Oko Uro Piles would probably do some. So here's the Oko Uro deck I built, and I played a couple games with it. Where is the Oko Uro deck? I played a couple games with it. Oh, it's down here since I don't own, since I don't own all the Ragavads. So I played a couple games with it, and I feel like this this deck might be just too greedy. Like this was trying to make something like the modern, the modern money pile deck work. And it's really tough without fetch lands. So this might be better as just like a Bant deck or maybe a teamer deck. Maybe being full four colors is just not the way to, the way to go. So it felt like it's got a lot of individually busted cards, but uh, I don't know how good it is overall. The Yellow Summer I think is, is pretty powerful. Can we channel Fireball on Arena? Sort of, although, so, the channel thing, let's play some channel. You don't need to own any of the cards. The uh, Wizards, Wizards lets you play all the cards. So, the channel thing, could you channel Flare Ball? Yes. I think it's harder, though, than just winning with, like, channel into Ulamog or channel into Ugin or Emrakul. Because the thing is, um... <laughs> The thing is, you need to, like, find a way to have enough mana and also red mana to cast the Fireball. So you need to wait until, like, turn three or four, most likely, to actually win with Channel Fireball. So Channel Ulamog might just be stronger. Mono Black Storm. We got the Storm. We will play Storm. Let's let's just start playing games and see what happens. I would say, let's play Channel first, because I feel like Channel is... I feel like Channel is just the most busted thing. So let's get it out of the way. And then we can see if we can find anything that tops Channel. I feel like Channel should just consistently win on like turn two. Word of Bob, welcome to the fishbowl. We got, we'll try, let's try this build. And then we'll try, we can try, uh, we can try Phil's build with, uh, Phil has like the Karns and his build went like super deep. Probably more deeper than than necessary. Can I share the deck list? Yeah, yes. I didn't. I've just been building them, so I haven't exported any of them. Does this hand win on turn two? No, Mulligan. Does this hand win on turn two? No, but this might be worth keeping though. Two discard spells. I think we keep this. We don't have the channel or a way to find the channel, but we do have multiple discard spells, so we're probably not gonna die right away. Oh. oh. Our opponent's storming. Dark Ritual, assemble the team, demonic tutor. Well, I mean, I guess we just take the tutors and go from there. Ooh, Grum Gully. Yeah, that was a, boy, that was a minute ago. I remember that deck. That deck was sweet. Well, let's keep taking tutors. Not, you have all the mana, you just can't tutor with it. I think that's our new plan. All right, channel. Channel off the top. Channel off the top. What about Colorless Storm with Channel and Aetherworks Reservoir? That could also be sweet. We we could build a lot of channel decks. I'm intrigued by that Realm Breaker deck now. I feel like as far as winning, it's probably worse than just putting a probably worse than just putting Ulamog into play, but as far as being funny, it's probably better. What's up with the early stream? Ah, so it's just spoiler. Spoiler schedule. I think in the future, I think for the two weeks, when we do a spoiler for a main set, it's usually two Tuesdays are during spoiler season. Wow, I'm glad we uh, found another discard spell. Um, oh, opponent's playing Channel Storm, spicy. So I think in the future, we're just gonna do early streams on Tuesdays for those two weeks, because it usually ends up working out better that way anyway. <laughs> All right. All the disc, maybe we're just gonna naturally cast it. This is like, <laughs> The least broken, broken thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> this is two really busted decks doing literally nothing. <laughs> Opponent. All right, let's look at look at how bad this is. <laughs> this is this is an embarrassment. This is an embarrassment to broken decks everywhere. <laughs> uh, the fairest broken deck ever. Did you manage a turn one kill? I. So turn one kills are incredibly difficult. So how can you get a turn one kill? Ooh, I'm wondering. That's not good. Rezikur took. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so. Oh my god. Thank you so much for your, we're losing this. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How can you possibly win on turn one? Is there so the only way I can think of is winning on turn one involves a double dark ritual hand. 
Some sort of double dark... Oh, all right, yeah, I think our opponent got this one. We'll let them do their thing. I think some sort of double dark ritual... Double dark ritual... I don't know if you can do oops all spells, but Belcher. You could do a, like, potentially a Belcher kill. You could potentially do a full-on storm kill if you had a double dark ritual draw. Is there any way to win on turn one without having double dark ritual? Because that's actually asking for... That's asking for a lot. Like, that's a... <laughs> That's a very specific hand to have two exactly dark rituals and other pieces to go off. Uh, can you trickery on one, though? Because we don't have fast mana. So you can win on turn two with, like, trickery and an ornithopter or a Mishra's Bobble. But I don't think you can win on turn one with, uh, with that plan. Yeah, we're super. I think even if we draw a channel, yeah, this is just, like, a the weirdest most pitiful draw i mean i think that's one of the issues with a channel deck so we have channel and we have demonic tutor maybe we could play even more tutors maybe we should be playing like this alchemy tutor or something to just maximize our odds of finding channel even more there is some cards you can counter your spells to create two treasures and then trickery on one all right don't have mind's desire yeah yeah Forest, sure. Another land. All right, another one, another one. Come on, one more, one more, one more. Karn, all right. Well, they hit the Karn. We will scoop. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, if you can... Oh, what is the name of the counter that leaves two treasures? But then the... Uh, yeah, I guess technically that could be a turn one win. Although if you're doing that... Oh, boy. You're making your deck super risky, right? Because then you just trickery into the counter spell and cry <laughs> that's that's kind of the that's kind of the problem right well this is a turn three win demonic tutor into channel into everything that's probably fast enough on the play right we'll see our opponent could have discard or something our opponent's also trying to do something busted presumably they could also have counters oh wait is there a way so if we dark ritual Dark Rituals, three mana. Oh, we can't. Hmm. So Dark Ritual, we have four mana. Prophetic Prism's two, so it doesn't actually work. All right. I was thinking if we could Dark Ritual Prophetic Prism into channel this turn, but we we actually can't. So we'll just Demonic Tutor the channel. Is there a Watsy stream today? There is. I don't think we're actually going to watch it, but there is a Watsy stream at, uh, at one o'clock. Well... <laughs> Discard's a good draw here to make sure our opponent's not countering us. How about an Inquisition opponent? Memory Lapse, Sword to Plouch. Well, okay. Hilariously, we don't actually win, do we? I mean, I guess this is fine. So we Memory Lapse, we Channel. Oh, actually, we do win because they don't have a Plains. All right, Ulamog. <laughs> yeah, fa fair, fair, good, clean, fair magic. <laughs> <laughs> opponent how about a flawless victory opponent's floating they're red mana they're gonna do a little bit of bolting i guess that means we should not cast anything right we can dark ritual out the one ring next turn if this game continues the way we could lose is if they like well i guess even so if we dark if we play the one ring then they could go red source bolt and we would die yeah opponent is playing a very fair deck for for the theme of this week all right, opponent's going to kill the Ulamog, which is... Wow. We Ulamogged and didn't necessarily win. Well, we get to Dark Ritual. Into the One Ring. Into Draw with the One Ring. Into Dark Ritual. Into Prophetic Prism. <laughs> the best Dark Ritual ever. Into Thought Seize You. Take the Leyline Binding. Go. <laughs> What is what is your win? Uh, what is your win, reindeering? Wait, wild McCoddle? Our opponent really is playing some fair magic here. Oh god, that's all lands. Oh, we're gonna lose to the wild McCoddle. We're gonna Ulamog. We're gonna Ulamog and lose to wild McCoddle. Oh, that is that is an embarrassment. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. You know, down down to seven. That's even more lands. Activate the one ring. Draw three. Veil of Summer, that's... We're, we're dead to Wild Nicoddle. My God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I mean, 
You know what? Wild Mikado was banned in Modern. Maybe our opponents got it right all, all along, and they are actually playing the, bo the broken card. <laughs> oh, God. That was that was horrible. Wow. Wait, maybe Channel's not the best deck. Yeah, that is. I mean, we did really low roll because we had the one ring and we drew six cards and they were five lands in a veil of summer. And then our opponent also had to top deck because they had nothing in hand. So our opponent kind of like ran well and we ran really poorly. Well, okay. How about... How about a turn two Ugin hand with a one ring back up? Thought sees you. Dark Ritual, Demonic Tutor. Sure, you can you can keep that stuff. All right. I mean, Ugin is not a guaranteed win. Dark Ritual, Cloud Key. Uh-huh, opponent's, opponent's going off. Dark Ritual with that Cloud Key, busted. So do you think channel's actually just like trickery then essentially? It's not actually the best deck, it's just like kind of a meme. Well, let's play Ugin. Let's also play a one ring. Well, okay, opponent, opponent's had enough. <laughs> so so far we're one and two actually with this deck. Maybe, maybe channel's not that good. Channel, channel, yeah, fair, fair magic. Alright, wait, what did let's do one more with this and then. What were the other ideas you had for channel? What were the other ideas you had for channel? So someone wanted to Realm Breaker. That would be funny. Are there any Storm I guess would be the other way? We got to do we got to do a channel fireball win. Uh this hand does not have a channel. This hand does. Okay. Uh how much life do we have? This plus this we go to 1. We're not, we're not afraid of going to one, right? We're not afraid of going to one life. Who cares? Yeah, one life is fine. Tap land, go. <laughs> Opponent, do you have a spell pierce? Do you have a thought seize? They could have a spell pierce. Well, uh, channel. Okay. Uh, Ulamog. Oh God, we have to exile our own land. That's unfortunate. <laughs> God. The thing about channel is it isn't even it isn't even really fun. Like it's not even it's not even especially fun. Like it's just like oh did I, it's it's like trickery. It's like banned trickery. Let's see, lucid. Wow, combining together channel with a uh, Tabalt's trickery. Wow, that seems like a hilariously risky deck. Now now we probably have to try this just to see. Just to see. All right, last last game with this build. Last game with this build. Turn turn three. I guess not a win. Is this so? The thing that arenas. So channels banned in Legacy. The thing that uh. The thing that arena is missing that Legacy has, which makes it much much uh more degenerate on arena is Legacy has a bunch of free interaction. Arena has none of it. There's no channel death shadows it. Ooh, all right, opponent's gonna play some uh, some fair Oko style magic. Um, do we take, so if we, yeah, I think this works. Demonic Tutor for channel. I almost, I almost feel bad. This is the kind of wins like, I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, sure. The thing about Pact is it you can't really use it to stop your opponent, though. Like, you can't stop your opponent's combo or else you just die to the Pact itself. <laughs> opponent's... <laughs> the funny thing... <laughs> Two shocks! Two shocks! <laughs> Who comes? Who comes to know ban ban list day and place two shocks in their in their deck? In their, uh, all right, I know lightning bolt is technically on the ban list, but <laughs> our opponent is doing this format very very differently than uh, than I am doing this format. Okay, so we will. So we need to let's see. We need to green green black. So if we go green green. So we cast channel. Uh huh. 
opponent. Would you like to would you like to shock us? No. Alright, and then we will demonic tutor. I kinda just want to take Emrakul here because it's funnier. Yeah, let's take our we take Emrakul, we go to one. Is there a way we lose because of that? Probably. You know what? Why not though? We came here to do funny things. Emrakul. Boo. Down to three. We would like to control your... We're going to shock that Gilda Goose so hard. <laughs> I've literally seen people playing life game. Wait, no. <laughs> playing life... Playing Soul Sisters and no ban is <laughs> different. Surgical extraction would be... Yeah. I mean, I... Uh, oh my god, they actually did have a third shock. I was kidding. Wow. You know what? If our opponent, if our opponent had held on to one of those, if they had held on to one of those shocks, I think they would have got us. <laughs> All right, let's. So that that's the that's the first build of the channel. Let's try let's try this wild build from from Lucid. This is so this combines together two of the most ridiculous cards that I can imagine in this format, which is not just not just channel. But to Bolt's trickery, we have both of those together in a deck. It is, it is just all the all the broken combos mashed together in one. What happens if you play them both? That is the that is the question. So trickery. So this deck, if you've never seen trickery, trickery is like probably even more more boring than channel in some ways. So. So how did, can this deck win? Well, first, you can mulligan down into a zero drop plus a trickery. This plan seems incredibly risky. Lucid, does this actually work? I feel like this scares me, this big pile of one drops. I feel like, you know what? Let's just play this. Let's just play it. Let's apply our styles and play it. I feel like we're going to trickery into Ragavan. Which is kind of which is kind of hilarious, because I kind of feel like we're gonna do the trickery thing and then end up with a Ragavan. Hey, Ragavan's pretty busted, but okay. Yes, I promised I would post the links to the deck list. Hang on. Uh, so here is this is the channel deck we just played. I will I will post them. So Lucid has their um, Lucid has their deck list. I will post the channel deck we just played. Golgari, hang on. All right, Golgari channel. Let's try. Let's try this trickery deck. I feel I'm very scared about how this is gonna go, actually. But it's gonna be funny, even if we hilariously flame out. It's gonna be. It's gonna be hilarious. What's in the sideboard for Wish? Um, I honestly didn't look. We'll see. We'll see if we draw it. Let's see if we. Oh, that's the other trickery deck. Where is trickery? Ch All right, this should. This should be interesting. Are there any alchemy cards that are broken with channel? So channel really wants colorless cards. That's the that's kind of the easiest way to win with channel because you can cast them all without having any extra mana. So I don't think there's any alchemy cards. So there's alchemy cards like we saw our opponent playing the extra tutor. There's like an extra demonic tutor. Well, okay. I mean, this this is just a channel hand, but sure, this is... Technically, we just have the turn to win. I don't know why more people do not play Thought Seizes in this format. Here, let's let's play this bobble. Boom, what are you playing, opponent? What do you got going on over there? Swampy. <laughs> this might be the greatest event in the history of Magic Arena. Okay, opponent has a literal, literal murder on the top of their... T literal murder on the top of their deck. <laughs> I just imagine our opponent, they're like, wow, Wizards, they're finally doing this event where I can play all the cards, all the cards that I couldn't afford to put in my collection, I can actually play in this event. This is finally my chance to play, finally my chance to play Murder. I have finally... I have finally gotten my opportunity. <laughs> I have finally gotten my opportunity. Oh, chromatic orrery. Make a little mana. Uh, yeah, how about, oh, please don't kill us. 
Yeah, opponent, would you like to murder our Ulamog? That is... <laughs> technically, murder is illegal, you're right. <laughs> that is that is technically true. We can even... We can even play this Ragavan for free, and then, you know what, we're going, we're going all the way. Boom. Boom. Uh, we will take a trickery for next turn. All right, you're, you're go opponent. <laughs> Murder! Murder! Opponent plays the tap land. All right, we get to do the thing. Chalice of the Void. Haha, -ha, just kidding. Tabalt's trickery. Spit it to win it. Spit it to win it. Into a... Another Ulamog, okay. Well, okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. That's not bad. <laughs> our, poor, our poor opponent is getting kind of wrecked. Is this just... Wait, this is just lethal, isn't it? Oh, it's not... We're one short. We 19 them. We gotta look at this deck list. What is our opponent? Death... Raven's Ravenous Triple Fresh. Wait, our opponent's just playing a legal deck. They're just playing a legal deck. And they're actually sticking it out. Oh, I feel bad. I, I actually feel kind of guilty about this. <laughs> what, what is our opponent up to? <laughs> what a what a strange, strange event. I feel like, I mean, I guess some people, so I guess this event, in theory, I guess this event, in theory, would draw in people who are just free-to-play players, right? So if you're, if you're someone who just, like, doesn't have a big collection and you really love zombies, this is your chance to actually build a zombie deck with all the zombies that you don't have wild cards for. The problem is, oh, boy. This deck is just okay. We're gonna we're gonna switch off a we're gonna switch to something that's not channel because I'm actually getting bored of channel. This is <laughs> this is actually just way way too easy. It's so easy it's actually boring. Please thought sees us. Okay, no no. <laughs> okay, so I think channel is is off to a good start for being the most busted deck in the. Wow. Also Kozilek. Well, okay, channel. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, we're we're doing that opponent. We are doing that. Um, Ulamog, Exile, Exile, Ugin, ouch, down to one, we might, we might die here, we might be killing ourselves, this is turn two, this is literally, or this is literally turn two, this is why channel is banned. This is so we're gonna switch it up. No more channeling. No more channeling. How are we getting punted? <laughs> I mean, we didn't make our opponents join the no ban list event. That that was their choice. That was their. If we get shocked to death here, I swear. I don't even know what I'm doing in this event. We're gonna get shocked. We're gonna get shocked. Come on, I'm actually rooting for our opponent to go mountain shock. <laughs> that would be like the greatest thing. A tap land opponent that is neither a mountain or a shock. Well, Boltia. Ulamagia. Oh, okay. Our oh, I don't feel bad. Opponent's playing a a busted channel deck too. Sure, that's that's fair then. That's fair. Just in case. Let's uh let's channel also chalice on one. We will just cut off all the mana values. Alright, what what should we try next yet? Okay, I think this is enough channeling for one lifetime. So channel's busted, but can we do something that is eagle? Okay, so Lou said your build actually felt really good. We didn't really do trickery stuff, but that's, that's, we just drew the channels every time. Okay, that's actually kind of, so channel busted, but pretty boring. What is something that could be busted, but maybe interesting? Do you want to try the storm deck? I feel like this storm deck will have really cool kills if it works. So here's the, here's the storm deck I have currently. I do have a pure trickery build too. But I want to kind of, we need a palette cleanser. We need a palette cleanser compared to, uh, compared to channel. We need to do something that's a little more interactive, like storm. <laughs> so this, this is a storm deck that, uh, that Phil originally built. So this is, the idea is, hopefully, 
we can dark ritual into the bolus's citadel or mind's uh, desire tendrils of agony and also weather the storm gain us back a bunch of life so we can hopefully just play like our entire deck we even get scheming symmetry to put cards on the top of our deck only one weather i didn't make any changes to this deck this is just straight up straight up the deck that phil made if it doesn't if it doesn't work we can build our own we'll build our own storm deck no we didn't just join this match did we okay let's let's try phil storm deck though scheming symmetry so i think the plan is if we actually cast scheming symmetry we're gonna win that turn that's the that's the hope the hope is we actually just win the game any yorian builds i haven't built any yorian builds mono black storm we could build mono black storm demir so just like we we i'm also down for just trying to build back so you want to see mono black all right stone rain really wants mono black we can we can probably build mono black storm how do we do this so we have mind's desire hmm sand seems pretty fair it's pretty 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 fair well two demonic tutors i guess that's fine i feel like we're about to get trickeried with how our opponent's mulliganing square thing by the levels wait what are we talking about this down here uh if it's this stuff that's just uh that's just the overlay the untap.gg overlay is there a way to search for band cards on arena no but there is this website if you if you just type like banned cards into google or whatever it should be the thing that pops up but there is a watsy site that sort of maintains a ban list although they don't update it enough because ragavan should definitely be on here and there's also some rebalance cards that don't show up like teferi was banned rebalanced you get to play the real version not the the rebalanced version in this event but that's also not on the list but the list should uh should help at least well all right tap land go all right opponent we're gonna storm you we're gonna storm you what uh so what we what would we play in mono black storm stone rain thoracle could be really good i could see thoracle being pretty busted well let's demonic tutor so if we demonic tutor okay i think we want a demonic tutor into citadel and then we can demonic tutor into dark ritual to get down the citadel i think is the i think is idea oh god or we just lose why are you doing this manually opponent okay opponent hard mode hard mode yep 10 this looks like a new lamug uh fair <laughs> sure have we built the most broken deck yet i mean channel so here's another question for it channel i think is probably the most broken deck the question is what is the best way to stop channel what is the best way to actually stop channel i wonder if the best mono black storm deck is actually like a paradox engine deck paradox engine artifact storm with channel would probably be busted oh this hand is horrible this deck actually seems kind of jank <laughs> we might have to build another storm deck i'm not i'm not impressed so far with maybe it's storm as an archetype but so far i'm not impressed with this deck as a storm deck i bet there you could probably build a super good control deck that would just absolutely absolutely wreck what everyone else is doing Ooh, double dark ritual if we could only find only find the bullets to citadel look out look out about it thought sees and the card that gives you hex proof yeah those are those are good options are we actually up against a control deck okay well how about an uro not really much point in countering the uro if it's not being escaped all right opponent sees a point in it best way to beat it is to go first and also channel yeah this event would be more fun as best of three because you could actually play sideboard hate cards i wish wizards would focus more on that for some reason they're just like they get so narrowly focused on only best of one all the time it would be 
much more interesting if you at least had a best of three option. I'm sure they're afraid they're going to like split the player base and long wait times and stuff, but this event would be so much better if you could, oh, like I'm bringing in my thing that stops the really busted thing you're doing. Loganode, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Zoomers don't have the attention span. I mean, channel ends games pretty quick. It probably is just like thought sees and cheap counters. All right, yeah, sure. We're gonna we're gonna stop that for now. Put it back on top. How about a Melissa Citadel? I wonder if this deck should be playing four Citadels. That's should we be dark ritualing out this? So we could dark ritual, dark ritual. No, oh god, that. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we can't even... This doesn't even work. <laughs> Alright, we, we didn't want that dark ritual. Hmm, that was awkward. This is no ban list... Uh, no ban list arena. You get all the cards. You get all the cards. Yes, it's not. This is not looking good. Okay, so I don't like this deck. I think this deck's just... I think this deck's just bad. <laughs> I think this deck's... The, the, so bad is fine, but it doesn't seem like it's doing cool things. And that's that's the sin. That's the sin of this deck. Is it's not doing anything cool. And if you're not going to do anything cool and you're going to be bad, then we're moving on. We're moving on to a, onto the next deck. We just need to build our own storm deck, I think. That might be the that might be the solution to this problem. Build our own storm deck rather than, a, than this one that seems just so horrible. Um... All right, pass. I mean, there's no way. I kind of feel like we should just scoop because this is never going to do anything. Orcish Bowmasters, sure. Yeah, there's no... It's all free. And you get all the cards for free, too. This is my all-in channel, channel Belcher deck. Ooh, let me let me see an opponent getting in with the Bowmasters. Yeah, the way our opponent's playing this, there's literally zero chance that we go off. We're just going to sit here and get beaten down for the next nine-ish turns. Oracle the Alpha. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. About Abbasis. Mind's Desire. Well, I guess if there was anything that could let us go off, it would be Mind's Desire. Do we even... So we do this. We have eight mana. Well, this feels bad. I mean, I guess this is what we got. Dark Ritual. Weather the storm. Can you beat the life gain? Yeah, I mean, we're going to Mind's Desire and just try it. And if it doesn't work, then we'll uh, scoop and build another storm deck. Mind's Desire. Hey, what's up, Doug? How are you? Good to see you. The opponent. Going to learn about the storm mechanics. Huh? Stops a copy. We still get two. Land and demonic tutor. That's not enough. All right, let's let's build our own storm deck because I don't really like this storm deck. My fish is bad. Welcome to the fish bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Never meant to cause you any sorrow. Never meant to cause you any pain. I only wanted one time to see you laughing. Only wanted to see you laughing in the realm of Eldraine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like Winota is probably absurd. Do you think Winota is fast enough to be good? I bet Winota is good. Okay, let's let's just build. Let's build a storm deck. Community, community storm, community storm building. So how do you how do we build a storm deck that can actually be good? So I feel like so the problem is you need a card advantage engine. That's what we don't have on Arena. There's no gifts on given. There's no ad nauseum. So. So obviously Dark Ritual. Beyond that though, like, is the best plan, is the best plan actually, actually just Bolas' Citadel? It's probably gotta be, right? We can build a, we can build a Winode after this too. We can try Winode. I bet Winode is pretty busted. Underworld Breach? How do we have to, what do we have to support Underworld Breach, though? Like, how do we... So there's no Brain Freeze.
Mishra's so Mishra's bobble is Mishra's bobble's a good option. Demonic tutor, obviously. So dragon rage. So we got to go dragon rage channeler to fill the graveyard. Do we have? Do we have just a repeatable mill spell? You know how like tome scour is sometimes used. Do we have a mill spell that would let us go infinite? That's what we. That's what we need. Is just a mill spell that lets us infinitely fill our graveyard. There's no lotus petal. There's no moxin other than that card that shuffles the power nine into your deck. Hmm. Can we actually make trickery is a mill spell? <laughs> infinite, infinite trickery. <laughs> looting. Looting's pretty good. That might be so looting one mana. <sighs> it's red though. We really need black. We need a black spell that fills our graveyard so we can so what we need okay here's what we need to go really infinite i think is we need a black spell that can fill our graveyard so we can mill ourselves escape dark ritual mill ourselves escape dark ritual i don't know if that card exists though is there a black card that actually lets us pull off this combo stitcher supplier would need to die if we could sack it i guess we could try to go like ashnod's altar stitcher supplier with this focus on eldraine with enchantments do you see enigmatic incarnation decks go back to very good and explore historic Ooh, i think they'll be fun to try at least glimpse glimpse might actually be Uh, maybe Glimpse is worth it. Our mana's getting a little... Is there a way we can return Underworld Breach from our graveyard to the battlefield? That's the... That's the final... The final question. So if we mill the Breach, is there a way we can just put it into play cheaply to start the combo? Hmm. Storm actually seems tricky to build well there's not really is there interesting wait multicolored permanent oh that doesn't actually work an offer you can't refuse is essentially a ritual it's true it does make mana and it can stop a channel which is nice are we still playing Bolas' Citadel or no? Are we trying to do this without Bolas' Citadel? Renegade Rallier could work with a fetch land. No Citadel. Yeah, our mana's already getting sketchy. I mean, I guess we can just trust that we draw it, that we tutor it up and then win. Ooh, Bobble does trigger revolt. Oh, do we want our mana to be that jank? That's I guess that's the other question. We started at mono black. How are you feeling about this, Stone Rain? I know you were big on mono black. How do you how do you feel about where we're at at the moment? <laughs> Song of Creation would be better. Ah, oh, Citadel does seem busted, right? Citadel does seem pretty good. Maybe the glimpse isn't worth it. Mono black seems tough. There's just not enough. There's not enough mana production. That's the that's the issue. Like, how do we actually get Bolas' Citadel down in a time in a timely manner? Tinker would be so good. Uh, more rituals would be good. There's just no like. So there's dark ritual, and that's basically it, right? We just don't have. There's no backup. There's no backup. So mana is going to be a big concern. Ah, Storm feels so slow. There's got to be... Oh, actually, you know what it is? It's probably... It probably involves Mizzix Mastery. That Maybe that's the... Maybe that's the actual game plan. 
is try to try to do Mizzix Mastery, because then you can... Hmm, that's still a lot of mana. I like Star Sphere Bobble plus Knight's Whisper. Magecraft Liliana. It's a little expensive, but it could be all right. Oh, but then you probably need... Then you probably need... Hmm... Oh, channel. I don't want to be another channel deck, though. Channel would provide a lot of the mana. That is that is true. So maybe, like, ah, oh, but then you're a channel deck. I, we already played so much channel. I don't know if I want to be another channel deck, honestly. I used to do Mana Dork plus Frexian Tower Witherbloom Apprentice for Bolas' Storm. Ooh. Is self mill combo count as storm? Hmm. Ah, I don't know if mono black can work. There's just not. There's not enough free. Ah, boy, storm actually feels really bad. I'm very disappointed in storm. There's just not. There's not enough rituals. Wh Wizards, where's cabal ritual, Wadzi? Where's cabal ritual? I just don't know how we make the mana. That's the. So if we go to the artifacts, there's like free spells ish, chromatic sphere, chromatic star. Those are like, uh, nah, they're not even really free. They like cost a mana. They like cost a mana. Is there no like plus mana rocks? They didn't accidentally reprint something, something busted. <laughs> Spheres are to draw cards. Yeah, I just don't know how we... Hmm. I mean, well, we'll try it, Stone Rain. We'll try it for you. Well, let's give it a shot. And then we can always move on to another archetype. I feel like... I just don't see how this deck actually works. Unfortunately. I just don't know how we... Cast enough spells to... To storm off. Like, I, I'm just not... I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing a way that we have, like, enough mana to actually do it. Yeah, give me Paradox Engine, but... <sighs> but how do we make the Mana Stone Rain? I, I am down with trying... So we got the Bobble. Is Knight's Whisper even on Arena? I don't think it is, is it? So there's no Knight's Whisper... I mean, I guess Sign in Blood is essentially the same card. So we draw cards just like, how do we... How do we make enough mana to actually do anything? That's the that's the issue. Dark Petition is not Arena. Yeah, so Stone Warrior wanted to try Mono Black Storm. So we're trying to, trying to stay Mono Black, and I just... Uh, I feel like we could storm off on like turn eight, <laughs> maybe turn six. I'm just not sure how like, cause tendrils is four mana. Our only way to make mana is dark ritual. Everything else costs mana. So I'm just not sure how we like cast a sign in blood, cast a chromatic sphere, cast a chromatic sphere, do that to get enough storm count and then tendrils. Like, I don't know. I don't know how that's actually possible. Yeah, this would be interesting after after uh, after the new set comes out. Hey, what's up, Yugi? How are you? I mean, we can add the one ring. That's just still like a very late game, very late game plan. There is no no coffers uh, on arena. I don't believe there's even an Urborg on arena. Well, all right, we we will try a game. Uh, we'll try a game with this Stone Rain and see if you have any more suggestions. This uh, this is the time. We'll we'll try a game. I will say my. Uh, I don't see it. I just I don't see how it works. But we'll we will give it a try. Turn one. I don't know how you win turn one with channel fireball. Is that possible? 
How how would you win turn one with channel fireball? I guess maybe it involved an offer you can't refuse. I guess there could be a way if you could an offer you can't refuse yourself enough. You might be able to. Inspiring statuary free artifacts. Yeah, that might be the. I mean, we'll try a game with this. We'll try a game. That might be the way to do it. But then ah, you're kind of just a paradox engine deck that's playing like demonic tutor. Which would probably be fine, but we need more murders. All right, let's let's uh, we'll try a game with this and then we'll move on. I I don't think Mono Black Storm can work now that we've actually started to put the pieces together. The idea is cool. I just I'm not sure there's there's enough support to actually storm off in a in Mono Black on Arena. There's just not enough not enough pieces, not enough engine pieces. I won turn two with Channel, Fireball, and Gain Lance. Ooh. No locket of yesteryear. There is... Uh, opponent's playing Channel. There is a... Uh, so there is Cloud Key. Cloud Key... So you can reduce the cost of your stuff by one. There's also... What is the one that reduces the cost of stuff by two? All right. I mean, the way I could see this actually working would be Bolus's Citadel. That could be a possibility. Bolus is sitting out with enough spheres and stars to change the top of your deck, although we might just get channeled here. Pwn it. Mishra's Bobble. Yeah, Semblance Anvil. That's the that's the one. Have you tried Racto Storm with Breach and Loris? No, we we're kinda working on a Racto Storm deck and then ended up trying Mono Black. We're gonna we're gonna give the Mono Black deck a shot and then we'll uh we'll switch it up. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Well, there goes the Citadel. We kind of needed that opponent. We kind of needed that. I don't get why you're not running Cabal Stronghold. I mean, I guess we could run Cabal Stronghold. It's just so... I feel like we want to be winning on turn... On, like, turn three in this format. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like Cabal Stronghold is mostly just too slow for for what this deck I think needs to do because it doesn't start making mana until turn what five <laughs> yeah where's we need more dread maws where's the dread maw sneak attack a dread maw how about cabal stronghold with eight fields and four Karns? Karn is pretty busted I don't know what is our opponent doing over there Opponent's obviously a combo deck of some kind, but if this is all just channel, then I'm kind of sad. <laughs> it kind of seems like they're trying to do something different, but maybe they're not. Rotodropic Verborgen Schmeagol is a ridiculous combo, yeah. <laughs> Rotodropic is one of my favorite cards. Rotodropic is some pretty crazy things. Yeah, Stronghold's just not very good. All right, opponent has Demonic Tutor. Well... I assume we're dead next turn. How could we not be dead next turn? So if our opponent tutored, we're definitely about to die. Opponent has another demonic tutor on the top of their deck. We draw a swamp and a swamp. Well, all right. Well, all right. GG. GG. Yeah, I think this deck's just going to be way too slow for the, for the power level of the format. Honestly, I wonder if this deck could... <laughs> I wonder if this deck could keep up in just normal historic. I feel like you need double dark ritual into bolus to citadel. I think mana is actually pretty good in this format. Well, this is supposed to be a. Well, the idea of this was to try to build mono black storm. We just need more rituals on arena. I think we need maybe when we go back to Strixhaven, if we get cabal ritual, or like. Uh, burnt offering or something we need we need more okay so opponent yes 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 after all this they're gonna channel an eldrazi yeah yeah i will say i'm a little a little tired of this uh <laughs> this eldrazi of this eldrazi kill the cardboard samurai welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you all right one more one more try with this deck and then we're uh, we're moving on we're moving on Ha, huh, the idea is cool, Stone Rain. The the arena card pool I think is just too limiting. 
It would be really sweet. I would love to get a win with it. We need... Let's get that Double Dark Ritual draw. Double Dark Ritual into Bolus and Citadel. Pray to the Magic Gods. Well, that is a Dark Ritual. Opponents on Lure is so good. That's probably not great. That probably means lots of discard. About it. Inquisition. Yeah, I do think that Channel is... Channel is the one card that I actually think is kind of frustrating in this format. Alright, Chromatic Star, go. Have you seen Channel plus Karn plus Chromatic Ori and Mind's Desire stuff? Um, yeah, we have a deck that, that does that. It's, <laughs> it's funny for sure when it goes off. Oh, God. Well, uh, yeah, I think we're about to get... Well, our opponent's playing some Fair Magic. Dread Horde Arcanist, all the discard. Abundance. I don't know why we're not playing discard. It doesn't really help with our with our combo plan. I think discard is very good, but I don't think you can really. I don't think you can really overload a, a storm deck with discard. I mean, honestly, honestly, I think this one's just kind of a, a non-starter. It stops dying to channel every game. That is true. But I don't know how we ever... Like, I think our odds of storming off with this deck are already very low. And if we add in a bunch of discard... Yeah, alright. Mono Black... We tried it. We tried Mono Black Storm. Sadly, it's just not not enough pieces to actually make it... Uh, not enough pieces to actually make it work. No Siphon Mine. We have a new spoiler. Ooh, do we actually? Alright, let's, uh, let's see. What is our new spoiler? Is it good? Elusive Otter. Wizards and their creature types. <laughs> so many, so many random animals. Elusive Otter. So one blue mana, prowess, creatures with power less than its power can't block it. That actually seems kind of reasonable, right? And then it's adventure side. One green and X, sorcery, distribute X plus one plus one counters among creatures you control. That actually seems like a pretty reasonable creature. So, like, Monastery Swift Spear, one mana, one power prowesser, is, like, a eternal staple. The downside is this does only have one toughness. So, it's probably not going to see play outside of standard because it gets Bowmaster sniped very easily. But in standard, that actually seems like a pretty strong threat. We also had that other, wasn't there, like, a Miracle Grow style creature? Maybe we can build some sort of, like, teamer, teamer prowess style deck with a... With what we have in standard, I could actually see that working. That might actually that might actually work. <laughs> yeah, Otter Otter Tribal's still a little bit away from being competitive. <laughs> hey Seth, big fan of the podcast. Could you do the fish meal at the beginning instead of trying to fit it in at the end? Hmm, I would I mean I think Elusive Otter has potential. I I like it. That card actually seems pretty good. And Gender Brute we know is pretty good. We've seen that in the in the past. We have seen that. Uh all right, let's Teamer prowess is cool. Speaking of teamer prowess, let's let's play the the no ban. I'm curious. We haven't played a, a fair ish deck yet. I'm curious. I'm curious if a fair ish deck like teamer tempo can actually work in this format. So fish meal at the beginning. I'll have to I'll have to think about it, Mono. So maybe. Maybe. There might be occasions where it would be good uh, good in the, the beginning. Well, okay. This looks like a fair hand. I mean, Spell Pierce to not die to channel. Oko. Super, super fair. Old Leaf Abs. Yeah, I bet there's a very good control deck. No one play. <laughs> very few people seem to play control in this format. Because everyone wants to do the broken thing. But I bet you could build a pretty strong control deck that just kind of wrecked everyone. Eh, Miracle. All right, so opponent seems to be playing channel. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, all right. Well, if our opponent has the draw, then I guess they win. Opponent takes the spell pierce. Well, we will play a tamp land and a bobble and pass the turn. Do you have channel? Yeah, and Holy Heat's not gonna not gonna stop an Emerical. Hmm. Yeah. 
that's that's fun so opponent cast an emerald gonna gain control of us during our next turn i mean technically oko can elk it in two turns right it's not like our opponent can really do much as they control our turn here they actually literally can't do anything i guess they can pass the turn they can crack the bobble so we draw a card at the beginning of our turn So our opponent hits us, they hit us down to seven, but then we get to Oko the Emrakul. We might actually just win this. So opponent does nothing and passes. We get to play a Raghavan, play a Stomping Grounds, and stop on our opponent's upkeep. I think we actually just are we gonna win this? Let's let's Mishra's Bobble. See what our opponent's drawing. Veil of Summer. Oh come on now. <laughs> ah! Veil of Summer actually is exactly the card our opponent needed to draw to not. <laughs> what are the chances? What are the chances? We draw another unholy. Yeah, I mean. Our opponent drew exactly the right card. Yeah, that was that was impressive. The opponent had, had to have turn one thought seize to not lose to spell pierce, channel and emerical, and they still had the top deck. So that was kind of just our opponent with the the four card combo draw there. Yeah, I think so. Now that we've played this format for like an hour, channel kind of ruins the fun of it. <laughs> I think that card. This, this format would be way more interesting without channel. Everyone has realized that it is just, like, the best thing you can possibly do. So, like, 70% of our matches are just someone trying to mulligan into channel or trickery. <clears throat> so you can beat it. Like, I'm sure we can build a control deck that wins, like, 100% of the time. Or not 100%, but very, like, a very, very high win rate against channel decks. But what's the fun in that? <laughs> like, that's that's also not very fun. Is there something in the podcast analytics? Yeah, whatever. Is there something in the podcast analytics that shows podcasts that go for an hour and ten minutes would do worse? Wouldn't mind a longer podcast that includes fish mail opponent. Gilded goose. No, I mean, in theory... Uh, actually, let's just bolt this. I mean, in theory, I think we could do a, a hour and 10 minute podcast. I know a lot of people have talked about they listen like on their commute or drive to work or something. So I don't know. Personally, I think that the optimal length of a podcast is more like 45 minutes to an hour. That's I think that's kind of the the accepted knowledge of what optimal is. But it's not not some hard and fast rule there's also like well okay that's actually a threat let's play dragon rage channeler i mean if we leave up these counters how's our opponent ever gonna do something broken opponent glacial fortress okay yeah i think we're gonna avoid that uh spell pierce mill the unholy untap spire bluff canal Ooh, this would be a little greedy let's wait let's wait a turn get him for one we can express a iteration next turn hit you down to 17. now winota's still on the list well we'll build winota after this deck uh drc number two actually let's graveyard that all right so we've overcome two okos expressive iteration Dragon Rage Channeler. And we'll keep Expressive Iteration. Um, so. Expressive Iteration Hand. Unholy Heat Library. Brainstorm Exiled. Brainstorm. Mill A. Actually, we can keep a Brainstorm. Keep a Brainstorm. Yeah, this is our brainstorm doesn't look as is hot. Bottom bottom. Play the tap land. I guess Dragon Rage Channeler helps a little bit. We can mill one of the lands, hit you down to 16. If our opponent plays a third Oko, I swear. <laughs> I swear. 
Seriously. <laughs> Sir Pony Cub. 3 Ocos? 3 Ocos. Alright, opponent's gonna turn on a food. And pass. Who has three Ocos? Seriously. Who? Who has three Ocos? Um So let's see. Put back this, put back this. Draw the expressive iteration. Play expressive iteration. Mill the land. We really need a bolt for this Oko. Alright, there we there we go. So Bolt in hand. What's Oko at five? All right, Oko's at five. Bolt in hand. Land in. I think this works. We're gonna beat the. We're gonna beat the triple Oko draw. So we get to bolt the food. Uh, mill the Ragavan. Dash the Ragavan. Ho! Oh! Three of the best planeswalkers of all time cannot overcome the power of our Dragon Rage Channeler. <laughs> How did we manage? All right, delighted halfling. That's that's fair. And opponent swords to plowshares. I have bad news of opponent. You're not the only one that uh that plays Oko. I think we actually just let's dash a Ragavan. Go attacking. About it. Are you blocking? Are you blocking? Opponent's gonna trade off their halfling. Sure. Well, we will play our Oko. Oh no! No! Oh. Guess we should have played around Spell Pierce. Opponent passes. Well, um, well, that's brainstorm. Put back, put back, put back. All right, there's there's always more monkeys. There's always more monkeys. Uh, dash a Ragavan. Wow, what a wild game. This feels like, kind of like we're playing Legacy or something. All right, Ragavan. Watch our opponent have Swords to Plowshares as their last card. Get in with the Ragavan. Oh, okay, we did a thing. Hit ya. Steal a Oko. Last Oko. Come on, last Oko. Oh, okay. Not last Oko, but uh, that is a good card. How about a Teferi? Time Raveler. Ho, ho, ho. Monkey power. Monkey power. Monkey power. Wow. Ragavan. I'm so glad Ragavan is bad. <laughs> That card is ridiculous. Bout it, G-Jesus. Well, you know what? I think we're gonna dash a Rangavan. We're just gonna keep doing this until you die. <laughs> this, see, this has actually been a really interesting game, right? Because no one's trying to channel each other. So this has actually been a very, very interesting game. Hit ya. Oh, go. Oh, go. Oh, go. Spell Pierce. All right, well, take up to Fairy. Pass the turd, pick up the monkey. Oh wait, what's your what's your mono black storm deck look like? Ooh. Is your oh, your opponent playing Chaos Bond? You do have some interesting matchups. Ragavan's definitely the, the good guy compared to Ragavan's definitely the good guy compared to uh, getting channeled. <laughs> Channel's the bad guy of this format, I know that. So, so chat, how are we feeling about Wilds? Give me, so we're getting close-ish to the end of spoiler season. We're not at the end of spoiler season. We still have, I think, so two more days of main set spoilers. Commander Precons, full set Friday. Um... What's what's the hype level now that we've seen a big a big chunk of this at? I'm I'm actually pretty excited for it. This set to me looks incredibly well designed. It looks really really well designed. If we die to channel on turn two because we can't counter spell yet, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> that would make me very sad. All right, opponent. This better not be it. Oh. Oh, they're, 
They're merfolk in around, okay? Merfolk with spreading seas? <clears throat> the the most degenerate card from <laughs> from Wilds of Eldraine? <laughs> oh, there's no spreading seas yet. It's not feel like old Eldraine. So you're drunk dead. This is something I hadn't really, really thought of. But actually, Tomer was on the podcast yesterday and mentioned this. And when he said it, it suddenly kind of clicked for me. So the thing that Tomer mentioned that I hadn't thought of is that Wilds of Eldorain is is showing the Wilds of Eldorain. Like the actual Eldorain was like in the city and it was the royal courts and the knights. This is still in the same world, but this is like out in the out in the forest or whatever, if that makes sense. Like it's uh it's out in the out in the wilds where all the ridiculous stuff happens, the witches out in their cottages and, and all that kind of stuff. From that perspective, it actually made a lot of sense. So maybe that's what they're going for. Cause the flavor still feels like Eldorade, basically upstate New York versus New York city. Yeah. Technically both part of New York, but <laughs> very different expressive iteration. Who DRC. Do we want another DRC? Probably. Actually, no, that turns on our DRC. Let's mill it. So we get a 3-3 three, three flyer. We get Oko to hand, because Oko's pretty good. Get rid of the bobble. Take the bolt. Stomping rounds. Maybe this deck is actually just good. Kill the Master Pearl, try and mill a land. This feels like playing a Legacy deck almost. This is the closest to playing Legacy, I think, that I've felt playing this no ban list format. Hey Seth, new to Arena and made it to Platinum in two weeks. Hey, congratulations with the gate deck. Just want to stop by and say thank you. Well, Squiggle Weekend, I'm glad it's so good. Sevulin, I'm glad it's working out for you. Yeah, deck is pretty sweet. Sevulin's kind of busted. I think indestructible, indestructible. Not, not inalkable though, is it? Oko is a ridiculous magic card. It is a ridiculous magic card. <laughs> It is kind of absurd. You know what? I think we keep consider because it works with Brainstorm. Uh, yes. Elk. Elk you? Elk you. So Elk the Sevulin. Hello to you, Sevulin. Hit ya. Unholy Heat the Kumana Speaker. Keep the Consider. about it yeah unholy any it probably would have been better but how can you resist okoing something <laughs> we don't get to play with this card like ever oh oh merfolk lord hmm hmm how's that working with your elk tribal deck over there opponent <laughs> oh i know sorry Sorry, dog. This one was uh, this one was early because of the spoiler schedule again. Ooh, we maybe we should be playing Minskin Boo. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, let's go bottom. Minskin Boo probably would be good in this deck, wouldn't it? Graveyard, graveyard, draw more. Consider well, expressive iteration. Uh, we are definitely keeping Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt hand. Graveyard Exile. Oh, how do we do this? How do we do this? So, Oko make a food. Well, Bolt the Sevulin. Mill the Brainstorm. Play the land, hit ya. Down to 11. <laughs> Oko just wins games. Oko, Oko's so over the top. Hey Seth, I got impatient, built Red Black Storm. Not a bad deck. Ooh, let me, let me see Ghost. Let me see. How did, yeah. Well, do you remember? The Wizards actually did a stream when people, at the height, hey, what's up, Sam? At the height of Oko's power in standard, and it's actually hilarious because people would not stop asking about Oko, so they felt like they had to address it. And and the answer was, um, was essentially paraphrasing, but essentially we didn't, we didn't 
think about Oko turning your opponent's stuff into elks. <laughs> that was the that was a TLDR. Basically, in testing, apparently they would like plus to make a food, and then the next turn turn it into a three three. And if you think of Oko as like, oh, it's only making a three three every other turn. What's the big deal? Then it's actually kind of it's actually kind of fine. Uh, in practice, though, the ability to what we did with Sevulin, turn it into a three three elk with no abilities is is actually very very powerful so that's uh that's what wizards apparently missed in the the testing process hey what's up bathroom baron so they're doing a special event on arena right now which is again do we have to counter one of these that feels bad but i think we do look at the stack uh so counter a trickster surveil away the land And second Oko, okay. I guess we probably want to keep that actually. Brainstorm. Put back Oko. Okay. Put back the land. Oko okay on top. Trickster resolves. Sure. Oko okay on top. But Oko okay is going to elk this food. And then we'll play Dragon Rage Channeler. And then... Do we attack? I think we're... I think we do. If our opponent takes this, they're just dead in the air next turn, right? Get in, hit ya. <laughs> Get in, hit ya. Play design, yeah. Play design was... I believe it was play design that did the stream where they talked about... <laughs> where they talked about... Uh, yeah, not actually... Not actually really testing the elking your opponent stuff. I believe that. That was the the group giving the stream. GG, Merfolk. Red Black Storm. Let's see what this looks like. What do we do wrong? Ornithopter. Dark Ritual Looting. Strike It Rich. It was Strike It Rich we kind of missed. That would have been a good addition. Village Rights. Demonic Tutor Tendrils Bobble. Underworld Breach. That looks that looks better than, uh, than our Storm deck. I will give it that for sure. I believe MDT's exact phrase was closer to they underestimated the power of turning opponent stuff into elk. Not that they know it could, just that they underestimated it. Yeah, maybe I I honestly don't remember the exact phrase. I know it was something to the extent of that was the problem was that that ability was was the one that was problematic or not whatever tested well enough realized how strong it was so yeah i don't remember the the exact phrasing you you very well could be right that that phrasing is closer but i know that was the the heart of the problem was elking your opponent stuff was underestimated i think we can keep this two drcs Ooh, channel torment of hailfire nice that's about the the 2023 version of channel fireball right pretty close <laughs> pretty close Fire Bluff's a good draw. Well, Dragon Rage Channeler. Yeah. Opponent. Basic Mountain makes me think about uh, trickery. Are we trickerying? Yeah, this format in best of three would actually be... I wonder if they'd ever do a best of three version. A best of three version would be sweet. Even... Oh, they're actually... Uh oh They're playing Mono Red! They're playing Mono Red! Our opponent's actually playing Mono Red. Uh, well, we will Dragon Rage Channeler number two play a land. Looking very tan today. Yeah, that's, that's a silly, silly bear's fault. Making me wander through the woods to track him down. Ah, oh, bear. Bear, bear, bear. Reckless Storm Seeker. Okay. We well, can't actually stop that can we that's a four four hmm well i think we actually have to do this i think we need to make this die all right land on top we'll keep it hit the storm seeker block the storm seeker and all right opponent <laughs> All right, opponent. <laughs> All right, friend. Can you beat an Oko? Can you beat an Oko? Make a food past the turn. GG, GG. So far, I mean, there's there's a forest. So it's not just standard mono red, but it, we'll say maybe they're doing something wild. 
They're mono, mono red, but with channel. <laughs> this no ban format, I think, would be interesting. So if I was going to do this format, I would ban channel. Maybe this is standard mono red. If I was going to do this... <laughs> If I was going to do this format, I would ban channel. Are you sacking this to kill the food? I would ban channel, and I would have a best of three option. So you can play sideboard cards to to hate on the, the fast combo decks. Channel Bane Fire. Do we got to do we gotta do channel Bane Fire? That is a classic that we haven't done yet. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, make you a 3-3 three, three while also gaining loyalty. How did they possibly let Oko free? Channel and trickery. I could see that. I feel like the format... Oh, yes. I, I would definitely agree with that. I wonder if we'll... I wonder if we'll see that in the near future. Like, don't you think Force Negation at a minimum would be pretty safe for, for Arena? Maybe when... So we know they're adding Modern Horizons 3 to Arena for Historic... Maybe that will get Force of Negation into the format. I'm really hoping... What do you think about this, uh, chat? What do you think about just putting Force of Will into into uh, Modern next year with Modern Horizons? I kind of think that we're to the point where we should just have actual Force of Will. The risk is you can use it to defend your own combos, which is not ideal. But I think it would probably... I think it would probably be worth it. Wow, opponent is staying aggressive. Sure, down to 13. Well, uh, Oko. El Kalana and Elena. Let's Play a tap land pass. We might be... We're going to die to the standard Gruul deck, aren't we? With a Oko on the battlefield. Well, okay, that's, that's not allowed. Could really use, like, an expressive iteration. Can Oko beat standard all by itself? <laughs> How do they top the Evoke Elementals? I don't, the only thing we know about the set so far is double face cards or MDFCs is uh, is one of the themes or the theme. So I guess just like now grief and solitude are on one card. One, one side's grief, the other side's solitude. <laughs> I guess that would be the way to do it. Uh, all right, so well, make a food. Make a food, play a monkey. I mean, Oko might, Oko might be getting us there. Might be getting us there. It is at 10 loyalty, which is kind of insane. About it. <laughs> Such a weird mix of what you see in this queue. It's either people like literally, it's either people literally trying to win with channel on turn two, the most busted thing imaginable, or they're like, um, I'm going to add this Mythic that I don't have a wild card for to my standard deck and see how it does. <laughs> like, I didn't have a wild card for Volatile Arsonist, but now I can finally... I can finally do it. Uh, are we blocking? This hurts, but it's... Uh, probably worth it? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I think still think we might be losing this. Block, block. I lost with Oko on the battlefield to Shieldred Bowmaster. We haven't really seen Shieldred Bowmasters in this event. That that much is for sure. More Okos. Well, uh, okay. Actually, wait. What does it say? Exchange controls to an artifact or creature you control for target creature and opponent controls with power. Oko's <laughs> insane. It really is. Uh, opponent. Here, would you like a food? We will take your your Halan and Elena. And then I guess we just play more Okos. Keep the new Oko. Take up for a food. We have run so bad. We've run so... All we've done is play Okos. I guess we played a Raghavad and countered a couple things. But really, this is just like Oko beating our opponent's deck by themselves. Casting Naturalist, last card. Yeah, Rakdos with the monkey and all the thought seizes and so forth is probably probably actually pretty good. Opponent. Gain that life. Up to 22. Up to 22. Uh, win con. Dragon Rage Channeler is actually the, the biggest win con. Oh, poor werewolf. Oh, 
You were an Ellen Elk. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. When this is actually pretty awesome because I've heard people, some people say recently, do you think we can, do you think we can unban, do you think we can unban Oko now? And I think this is showing why the answer is like the hardest of no's. Uh, we kind of like the, the look of this this goblin yoink <laughs> and get in and hit you <laughs> oko's just stealing all of our opponent's stuff are you gonna watch the weekly stream together now thanks as always for the great content ha ah, i will i'm gonna pull up the stream and see uh it really depends on what they're doing if the main focus is is we're going to be like getting a bunch of spoilers. Uh, we'll turn on the spoiler part. Uh, but I don't think we're just gonna watch the entire thing because it's not all spoilers. So looking at the stream, looking at the Watsi stream, it looks like main set spoilers are gonna be coming up. When Wizard switches to main set spoilers, we'll jump over and, and see the new cards. Uh, but we're not just gonna watch the entire the entire stream because a lot of it doesn't apply to uh, to us. So uh, chat, if you're watching the Watsi stream, if you notice them shift to the, the main set segment when they're doing spoilers, ping me and I will put it on and uh, we can watch that part together before the spoiler video. Yeah, I bet this event at least will generate data that wizards could use for for potentially unbanning cards in the future, which I think is is good. So uh, brainstorm really likes fetch lands, although the combination of dragon rage channeler and consider can kind of do it because we mill one card, mill another card, so we kind of get through all the brainstorm cards. We really could use an expressive iteration. That would be the the biggest one. What is the what is the Beatles and the Beatles and Grimm thing? Are they actual spoilers? Ooh, monkey. Monkey monkey. Uh hit ya. Can we steal a werewolf? Can we steal a werewolf? Pony goes to 18. Ragavan. Oh my goodness. A lot of Elena. Oh wow, the monkey. The monkey's so busted. Halan and Elena. Oko. Make a food. Pick up up! Pick up up! About it. There are too many products to keep up with, aren't there? It's... It's so much these days. Opponent gonna haste up the reflections of Kiki Jiki. And then what? Copy Stormseeker? Go attacking? Okay. Block. <laughs> Oh, opponent, how do you feel about an elk? <laughs> how do you feel about an elk? <laughs> and then we can play Ragavan. Go to combat. Grow the, grow the Ragavan. Hit you for three. <laughs> this just feels dirt. Yeah, this is just this is just Oko dominating. It is just Oko dominating literally all by itself. Oko, Oko all by itself winning this game. I mean, we are playing kind of against a standard deck. So in defense of, in defense of Oko, like it's not like we're playing against whatever channel at the moment. Oh, boon it. The Beatles, the Beatles and Grim stuff so weird. Like it looks like this is a, a lunchbox. That's a fine looking lunchbox. I'm very curious though, like, is this something Magic players are interested in? I feel like, I remember there being two Beatles and Grimm drops uh, so far. And I remember the, <clears throat> the first one was like some Kamigawa backpack and it seemed like no one bought it. And then the second one was this like, dragon secret lair drop with all these like ridiculous arts and expensive dragons and it sold out instantly is there i wonder how much of a market there is for non-card magic products like is is gingerbread gingerbread lunchbox 
gingerbread clock is that a clock wait no there's not 40 hours what is that thermometer i don't even know what these are <laughs> where's the j shoes where's the j shoes i don't even know what those are volatile arsonist okay that is um, no. oh it's a life counter okay i wonder if there's any cards in this drop if there's cards in the drop it might be worth it otherwise it is it is kind of expensive usually Abundant. i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure uh that's that's shaggy right isn't that shaggy i'm pretty sure matthew lillard like owns Beatles and Grimm or runs Beatles and Grimm like something something to do with like being at the top of that company I'm pretty I'm pretty sure <laughs> I mean that kind of makes me more likely to buy it I, it was just a gingerbread clock but if it's a gingerbread clock from Shaggy <laughs> I'm I'm in yeah that is that is definitely Matthew Lillard right what else is Matthew Lillard uh, known for? It can't just be Shaggy. Is he the owner? Okay, that makes that makes sense. What's what's the the next the next biggest role of Matthew Lillard? All right, opponent, gonna ping and ping. We're gonna gain a bit of life so we don't die. Opponent hits us to three, but there's bad news. Opponent, there's bad news. Actually, there's a lot of bad news. Uh, some of the bad news is we get to elk, uh, elk this food, and then we also get to lightning bolt your face just to rub it in that we're playing the band cards. <laughs> and then Scooby-Doo 3, <laughs> Scream. I've never watched Scream. Is Scream worth watching? I know it's like a classic, a classic horror movie. Oh, wait, is that a card? Is that an actual card? Sorcerer, oh there, oh, uh, I see. So there's like very, very high-end roll tokens. Okay, what do you think of, what do you think of the, what do you think of the roll mechanic? One of the things I noticed is the reminder text is ridiculously inconsistent. I, the funniest one, I wonder if I can find it again. There was one yesterday I realized, <laughs> It was the the adventure one that makes a roll. Like, it, it kind of blows my mind. I don't know. Uh, the consistency. There's so much text. Like, the roll mechanic has so much text that I don't know if it's actually, like, I don't know. Maybe people just adjust to it. But ch how many of you could tell me what all the rolls do? I know we haven't got to play with them yet. So maybe you will be able to eventually. This card, Conceited Witch. <laughs> Conceited Witch. So, okay. Three mana, three, two, Menace. Menace explanation. This creature can't be blocked except by two more creatures. So for the dozens of people who don't know what Menace is, it gets a whole paragraph right up. The other side, create a wicked roll token, attach a target creature you control. Uh, and then it has an explanation for adventures, which is also a returning mechanic. But how do you know what a wicked roll is? Like, there's no, there's no explanation of wicked roll. So it's very... I, I guess they just ran out of space. But I would assume, like... Wouldn't the explanation for the new mechanic, like Wicked Roll, be more valuable than explaining what an adventure is? And definitely way more than explaining what Menace is? So I don't know about the reminders on, on some of those. So I actually think this deck seems really good. This deck this deck seems kind of fair-ish, but I think... Ooh. Would you wear it? Would you... Oh, this is... I bet this is going to be a bundle that's like $500. My guess is $500 plus. What is the price of this? Fancy tokens, gingerbread sweater, uh, the, the, the clock. You got to get the gingerbread clock. What, what, what's your price for guess? Uh, guess for price. Price for guess? I would guess it's, I would guess it's like 500 bucks. It is kind of an ugly, an ugly sweater, isn't it? <laughs> ugly hoodie. Ugly hoodies, they're not really a thing like ugly Christmas sweaters, though. I don't know what you do with an ugly hoodie. It's always 500. So what else does Beatles and Grimm do? So I know the magic drops. Do they do things outside of, outside of magic drops? 
I feel like the roll mechanic is going to play well. I almost wonder, like... I'm curious if it was actually worth it to make eight different rolls. That's the... I guess they're trying to, like, add flavor or whatever. But they're all so similar. <clears throat> don't you think... Don't you think they could have done it with, like, three rolls or, like, two rolls? Like, is the cost... Is the cost, which if we go to if we go to Scryfrog and go to Wilds of Eldorade, I'm not sure the cost is is worth whatever small gain there is. So if you look at the roll cards, like uh so Charming Scoundrel, Wicked Roll, this one Monster Roll, this one Wicked Roll, this one Sorcerer Roll, Cursed Roll, Cursed Roll, Hero Roll, like maybe we see a bunch more of these as we as we go along but do we really need like two cards that make hero rolls in the entire set is when the creature attacks if its toughness is three or less put a counter on it is that different enough from plus one plus one in trample or you know all the other all the other like or plus one plus one in scry one like i'm kind of wondering i'm kind of wondering if it's worth the the mental cost to have people remember eight different things that are all like very, very similar with a, a slight twist. I'm not sure that it was like, I think you could have done the roll mechanic with like three rolls and had like plus one, plus one. And the one that turns your thing into a one, one. So you can put it on your opponent stuff if you need to. And then like maybe one additional one. I don't know. I think they're going to play good. I just question whether there really needed to be eight of them, whether the, the flavor gains by having eight of them is worth, um, is worth the memory cost of having people have to remember eight of them. Joe Mataglio from Magic Mike is one of the other owners of Beatles and Graham. Interesting. I didn't actually know that. Beatles and Grimm is a gaming company that offers licensed expanded editions of D&D modules, Magic the Gathering sets, and other games. They are known to create in-flavor maps, handouts, artifact bonus encounters, and other accessories. That's what I know from everything I've seen. It seems like Beatles and Grimm does really like high quality, high end stuff, which is cool. There's so many. We have lots of low end stuff in the magic world. There's so many like cheap deck boxes, cheap play mats. It's cool that there's an option for people that want to spend more. I don't know if I personally would spend the the amount on that. I don't know if I would get enough value out of it, but I'm glad that the option exists. All right. I promised Winota. I feel like so what do you put into play? What do you plan to play with Winota? Agent of Treachery. What's the what's the second best hit? Are the cards actually coming? Are we doing it? We're getting we're getting closer. Thank you, Past Blake and oh. Matthew and Paul. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, those are on sale right. If you head to Beetle and Grimm, they're on sale right now. The uh, link in chat. If you're interested, and check those out. They're echoing. Um, but let's talk preview cards. Okay. We got, we got some. We got spoilers. the rest of the show to just talk preview cards. All right, so, spoilers. Here we go, Jack. Uh, here we go. Off How's the audio from the main set? And uh, we'll watch the main set. I don't know if we'll go through all the rest of it this. if they and do spoiler uh, the commander lands, stuff. The non-polar basic lands. Non-full uh, art are basic. gorgeous. Uh -oh. Okay. And let's put those up there. We got ten of these to show off. And there we are. I feel like I'm very desensitized to basic lands. Going around is fantastic. Yeah. Like. I like that one. Wow, their audio is swamp, horrible today. Purple lights in the swamp, very pretty. Absolutely. If the auto, right. if the audio sounds bad, that's uh, not, that's not on my end. That's actually just the stream sounds like that. Darker tone, that, that plains. I mean, they, the, the lands are fine. They look fine. I don't know. They're not old border. They're not special treatment anyway. So I don't think I would play them outside of draft. But any tiny lights, <laughs> that's that's what Corey wants. Yeah. What do you? you, know that you want there's been a little conversation about lands recently. Has, have any of you played the Lorcana game? Apparently, Lorcana. Apparently, Lorcana does uh, does the almost like Hearthstone style. Not exactly, but apparently in Lorcana you can. Ooh, oh wait, new card. Stalk, it's the All right, Restless Vinestalk, the Simic creature lad. So ETB step. 
green or blue, five mana becomes a five, five green and blue plant with trample and still land. Whenever it attacks, one other target creature has base power toughness of three. It elks it. It elks it. <laughs> okay, so it's a lot of mana. This is the most expensive. This is Celestial Colonnade level mana to activate. It's on the ground. It is technically big enough to swing through Shieldred. And the ability to turn something else into a 3-3 three, three is good. Like, this can allow you to attack through a blocker. It can allow you to grow one of your other teams. Ooh, questing druid. Two mana, one, one. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, put a counter on it. So everything but green. Adventure's Eye, two mana, instant exile to the top of your library. A uh, top two cards of your library. Until your next end step, you may play those cards. Ooh, that card might be good. So two mana draw two is fine. And then the creature is like Quirion Druid, basically, like a, a mirror. This is the Miracle Girl creature. It must have been, it must have been uh, one of the leak cards and it just got officially previewed. It seems like it works well with that one drop that we saw earlier. Like the, the one drop prowess thing that's also a spell. Maybe we can do like Teamer Adventure Spell Slinger. Also worth mentioning that adventures work really well with the creature mode since you can cast both halves of them and potentially trigger it twice with one card it starts off as a one one but if you build around it, you go i bet this card's good i think this card's actually good i think the fact that seek the beast is is basically so the downside is compared to the other versions of it is you only get to play them until your next end step so the other versions of this card that C play are sorceries, but they last till your next end step. So this is going to be a little bit different. It's probably going to be best cast on the end of your opponent's turn. And then you untap and get one turn. To <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. That's a two mana mana rock. That's a, that's a two mana mana rock. They never put, is this, wait, is this a commander card? It says main set. It has been like. 15 years since we had a two mana mana rock in standard two mana legendary artifact taps to a mana whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control you may have it become uh the iron grade become a legendary equipment artifact named everflame heroes legacy if you do it gains three to equip equip creature gets plus three or plus three and loses all other abilities Ooh, wow that's a two mana mana rock I'm just, I'm shocked. I thought this was like off limits, never do it again. I thought this had gone the way of lightning bolts and birds of paradise. Is this card busted? I don't know. It's, it's unique. It's very unique. So two mana mana rock. You know what this means? <laughs> she older it on turn three. She older it on turn three. <laughs> every, every card actually just makes she older it better. No matter what it does. It actually is just making she older it better. Um, the fact that it turns into equipment helps get around the legend rule. So you may have it become. So if you draw one of these, you can always just have it stay a mana rock, always make extra mana. And then later you can turn it into an equipment if it's beneficial. Otherwise, that's kind of a way you can get around the legend rule thing. If you draw two, you play one, you make mana, you play your shieldred, and then you turn this into an equipment, it's gonna have a different name, right? So since it has a different name, you can play another Iron Crag and get away with it. Oh, only two only two main set spoilers? Three? Um, well, Jumpstart. Like the, there's some weirdness because oh. We aren't actually printing jumpstart packs for Wilds of Eldraine. So <laughs> Did you? Yeah, Wizards yeah. finally, so. Wizards finally gave up on jumpstart. The ah, <laughs> oh, jumpstart. What a what a sad sad That's saga. New cards made the packs, and then somewhere down the line, we were told, hey, we're actually not going to release this as a jumpstart product yeah because no, no one buys it had that's the art, and we that's were kind really of the problem right the <laughs> jumpstart is such a is such a sad sad story that is a, to me jumpstart is the best example one of the best examples of wizards endless greed if that makes sense so they make this product called jumpstart that people love it's like super cool it's super unique it's got good cards it's good for new players it's got cards for constructed players so it has all this really cool stuff. And then Wizards is like, wow, people really like Jumpstart. You know what we should do? We should do it every single set. And they did it every set and it watered it down. It diminished the awesomeness of the actual Jumpstart set. And now a year and a half later, they're like, okay, we're gonna stop doing that again. So the, the rise and fall, a good idea that goes too far. Food coma, these are all standard legal, by the way. Food coma, four mana enchantment when food coma, <laughs> 
enters the battlefield. Exile target creature and opponent controls until food coma leaves. Oh god, it leaves the battlefield. Create a food. Yeah, that's that's jumpstart power level. It is a very it is a very cute card, right? <laughs> The it's got the super cute like Eldradar, like the bees. I could imagine this being like a really good play mat. It looks like a little kid's it looks like a I don't know, like a book I got out of the library when I was like three years old or something. I could imagine this being the cover of some like little kid storybook. As far as being a card though, it's just it's too much, too much mana. Little little bit too expensive. Lady of Laughter. Wait, laughing at the squirrels? What are you doing? Five mana, four or five white flying fairy noble. Celebration, the beginning round step. If two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card. Hmm. Okay. That's actually not horrible. White fairy is kind of unique. Oh, laughing with, oh, they're laughing with the squirrels at this little kid I see. <laughs> the squirrels are laughing with them. It's the this little kid that's getting laughed at. Yoan Levar, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Five mana is a lot, but you should be able to draw an extra card every turn, right? I don't think it'll make it in standard. Like in standard, the bar for a five drop, even though like technically. If you build your deck in a way that you play this and trigger it the turn it comes into play, it's almost like ETB draw a card. Not that that's super exciting. I don't know. I don't think it's good enough for a standard, but it's not that far away. And I can imagine playing it in Commander, maybe. With Wedding Announcement. Yeah, Wedding Announcement. Ooh, Pests of Honor. The flavor... <laughs> The flavor in this set's really good, but it also feels like an unset sometimes. Three mana, two, two, mouse. Celebration. At the beginning of combat in your turn, put two, uh, if two or more non land permanents, blah, 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 put a counter on it. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, that's horrible. Okay. So I guess this is just supposed to be like a, like an unset flavor card. They dash, then dine. Very well. Very well. Very well done, Watsy Flavor Text Team. <laughs> you know, I never think about this, but you know there's someone whose job is to write flavor text. And just imagine someone at the Watsy offices, like frantically, they get they get pests pest of honor and they sit there. They're like spent eight hours. How do I how do I phrase this? How do I phrase this? <laughs> it's my stealing food. How do we how do we phrase this? <laughs> Fairy slumber party. Oh, this one, ah, oh, this makes more sense. When I saw this card. Yeah, wouldn't that be a great gig? Like, right flavor text for magic cards. When I saw this card, this also reads like an unset card. Fairy Slumber Party. When I saw this card, my initial reaction was this card is really bad for 60 card formats and not even that great in Commander. It makes sense that it was supposed to be a jumpstart card. The jumpstart cards are like intro pack cards. They're usually powered out. Six mana, return all creatures to their owner's hands. For each opponent, return a creature this way. You make two 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying, and they can only buy creatures with flying. So in 1v1, horrible, horrible, horrible. Six mana, sorcery speed, bounce, get two fairies probably. No, 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 don't even, don't even think about it. In Commander, that's where it's a little intriguing. So in Commander, you got three opponents. Assuming everyone has a creature, six mana, bounce the creatures, you get six, one, one fairy flying, uh, with flying that can't block. I could see that being worth considering in, in a deck that cares about the tokens. Like if you're a fairy deck or if you're a token deck and you're playing doubling seasons and parallel lives, uh, other synergies for just having a bunch of tokens, then I could see it being worth it. So you're competing with... Ooh, hmm, okay. Well, that's probably super win more, but draw three cards, seven mana, but it costs one less to cast for each creature that attacked this turn. So in theory, if you have six creatures, literally Ancestral Recall. I also like how it's an instant, so you can uh, attack during your opponent's turn and <laughs> and, re and reduce the cost of it. But, uh, I mean, this this feels like feels like ancestral recall right it's literally just ancestral recall <laughs> storyteller pixie four minute three three flying whenever you cast an adventure spell draw a card wow remember last time this was this was a one mana one one and it like broke standard edge wall innkeeper <laughs> 
Uh, Wizards, I will give Wizards credit. They have definitely learned from the last time. We're not seeing any any Edgewall Innkeepers. We're not seeing any Lucky Clovers. Those cards that really push adventures into overdrive. Instead, we're seeing this as our Edgewall Innkeeper, which I think means it's just like not playable. Four mana, three, three flying. Just going to be too slow. Experimental Confectioner. Experimental Confectioner. Oh, are they cooking a rat? Is that a rat in the food? Who's going to eat that? Uh, three mana, two, three. When ATBs make a food, when they sack a food, create a one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. That's kind of interesting for a food deck. Remember cards like this that say whenever you sack a food, you can sack them in any way. So you can be sacking them to Lannis, let's say, or something else that lets you sack artifacts. So you don't necessarily have to pay to gain three life, make a one, one rat. If you can sack them in another way, yeah, it, food are pretty easy to make. You can make a lot of food pretty easy. Oh, a rare, a rare, a rare. Malevolent Witch Kite, six mana, five, four dragon warlock with flying. When ETBs sack any number of artifacts, enchantments, or tokens, then draw that many cards. Hmm. That actually seems fine. Now, out of all the jumpstart cards we've seen, that one actually doesn't seem that doesn't seem that bad. Anytime you see the words any number of something, it's always worth keeping in mind because you might someday build a deck where you need to sack a whole bunch of that thing, and then this will be the card to get the job done. So six mana five four flying reasonable ish stats and if you build around this and you're sacking like three food four food sacking a one ring that you want to get rid of it can be refilling your i actually kind of like that card that card might actually be just standard playable old flitter fang look <laughs> that rat really likes to buy five mana three four legendary rat fairy Flying at the beginning of your hand step, if a creature died this turn, make a food, three mana, sack another creature artifact, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on anymore, chat. I don't even know. <laughs> Old flitter fang. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, flitter fang. Okay. I mean, the art's hilarious. The card name's hilarious. I guess it's like a big flyer. If you ever wanted to have rats and fairies together <laughs> in a in a commander deck, I guess this just gets the job job done. Like that's we talk about wizards as printing a commander for literally everything. Um, they they've gotten all the way down to rat fairy rat fairy dot deck. <laughs> I mean the. I don't even know what to make of this art. It's got like the the fairy the like fairy wings, which are usually fairies are these like dainty little creatures, but it's got this like very spiny huge rat arm. Become brutes. Two mana sorcery. One or two target creatures each gain haste until end of turn. For each of those creatures, create a monster roll attached to it. Uh, and this time we get the reminder tax. Enchant a creature gets plus one plus one and has trample. That art is something that looks like the texture on the art is what's getting me. Wait, is this about people becoming pigs? Is there a fairy tale where people turn into pigs? <laughs> Did I miss that one growing up? <laughs> I mean, that card doesn't seem horrible. So two, I wish it was an instant. If it was an instant, I would be, I would be even more hyped for it. So two mana, two creatures get haste, and they each get plus one, plus one in trample. And you put Tauros on the battlefield, and you trigger celebration, and you can drain with Arianet, and you can sacrifice. Yeah, that's a lot of little synergies. There could be a deck that could take advantage of that. Hey, Cease, where are you, Cease? Cece, come here, Cease. Yeah, she was here. Charging you again. Four mana, three, three human peasant. Whenever it attacks, gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. For each attacking creature, if a rat is attacking, it also gains trample. <laughs> Soon the rats are going to run this town, so I'm going to run with them. <laughs> that's, um, that's some next level, next level disaster preparedness. <laughs> I think the rats are going to take over this world, so I, I will just join them in case... <laughs> 
<laughs> Ogre Chitterlord, 6 mana, 6, 5, Ogre Warrior with menace. When ETBs are attacks, create 2 1 1 black creature tokens with this creature you can't block. Then, if you control 5 or more rats, each rat you control gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Wait. ETBs are attacks. So, this is like a, a bad. A bad Grave Titan. ETBs are attacks. Two 1-1 one, one rats that can't block. Then if you control five or more rats... <laughs> it's actually not that horrible. Like, if you really want to... If you really want to build a rat deck, this might... That's something I've been looking for and I haven't been able to find is, like... What's the payoff for making rats? You can sack them. You can bargain them. I haven't really found the payoff. There's not, like, a... Okay, put all your rats in a deck and I'm going to make you win the game... Maybe this is it. Maybe Ogre Chitterlord is that payoff. It doesn't seem that hard to make six rats, right? Rats, the, the rat tokens are pretty plentiful. Take it back, it's a better grave type. <laughs> uh, Intrepid Truffle Snout. The R in this set is... <laughs> It is good, I guess. Go Hog Wild. Two minute instant target creature gets plus two plus two with hexproof. Intrepid Truffle Scout. Two minute three one. When it attacks alone, create a food token. <laughs> hey, Seas. Come here, Seas. Come say hi to people. Here. I know. Come say hi. Here, people want to see you. Here. Can you say hi? Can you say hi to them? Yeah. Oh, you want to get down? Oh, okay, you can get down. Hang on, your toenails cut. Hang on. There you go. There you go. You can get down. Go do your cat things. I mean, that doesn't seem that far away from being playable. Pump spell that protects. Like, plus two, plus two. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't know why I read that as hexproof. It doesn't give hexproof. Okay. That's a little worse than I thought. For some reason, I was thinking it was a protection spell, but it's not. Provisions Merchant, 4 mana 3, 3 when ETBs create a food token, it's a beast peasant. When Provisions Merchant attacks, you can sack a food. If you do attacking creatures, get plus 1, plus 1 and gain trample. Hmm. I mean, that's not the worst for a food deck. So you gotta attack with a hill giant. Sack a food, you get plus 1, plus 1 and trample for your team. That's actually, like, that's actually not bad. They should replant Rat Colony. Those are, like, always surprisingly uh, surprisingly expensive. What do you think of the art in this set? I kind of I kind of like it. Is he... Look at that mushroom kebab... Mushroom kebab burger. Now I'm actually getting hungry. That actually looks pretty tasty. Wildwood Mentor. Three mana, one, one. Yeah, not a great start. Tree Folk. Whenever a token enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When it attacks another attacking, attacking creature, it gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is Wildwood Mentor's power. Not bad, if only it had branches. Um, That could be pretty sweet with food and bloods. We have food tokens, we have blood tokens, we have treasure tokens. It's, what was the two drop? What was the two drop? Uh, what was the two drop that had an ability like this? But I think it only worked with creature tokens. Oh, it works with rolls too. Yeah, that card might not be the worst. It does start off very slow. Yeah, three mana one one. I think the last one was a two mana two two. All right, there's Jumpstart. I mean, so for being Jumpstart cards, it seems good. I mean, uh, it seems fun. Good, like, competing in Standard, probably not. But it is pretty easy. Like, you play that, and you make a bunch of tokens, and all of a sudden it's like a 6-6, six, six, and it's making something else a 6-6. Six, six. So I don't think it's going to actually be competitive in Standard, especially with green being the worst color. But, uh, but... It is a cool card that I could imagine building a deck around. Oh, is that is that all of our new spoilers? So we get some we get some enchanting tales. The enchanting tales I think are the best part of this set. The enchanting tales are gonna make me buy buy some boxes of this set. It's been a minute since I actually actually like bought a box just to open it, but I think I'm gonna buy one of this set, at least one, just just because the enchanted tales are so strong. All right, let's. Yeah, we're not going to watch all the Enchanted Tales. Let's do... We. I promised I would do Winota. Let's see if we can build our Winota deck. So we can do a couple Winota games. And then... Uh, and then... I'm going to do the... 
the spoiler video for the YouTubes in a minute. Ah, do we want to do a do we want to do a unboxing video? What's our other finisher for Winota Chat? I guess we can just look up a. Uh... Like what else? What else should we be playing in a in a Winota deck? So we get to play Agent of Treachery, Angrass Marauders. I guess is the kind of the the classic. So you got Agent of Treachery, Angrass Marauders, and then ooh. Oh, we actually have Season Pyromancer, which is kind of ridiculous in this deck. Season Pyromancer. Do we have Eldritch Evolution on Arena? No. Hmm. How do we how do we find Winota? That's gonna be the that's gonna be the question. Will you do some giveaways for the Enchanted Tales like you did with Innistrad? Oop. Maybe, probably. Compulsion is a cool card. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Oh, eh, you are correct. What else? So we so we want Winota. We have eight Winotas. We can ramp into it. What else do we want in this in this deck, chat? We probably want to fill out this part of the deck with things. Actually, Bowmaster is probably really good. Are we Mardu? Orcish Bowmaster seems great. So we Bowmasters. So maybe we're Mardu Winota, and Agent of Treachery is just coming in, coming in for the for the finish. I think that might be the best way to do it. Elf Dorks, Ragavan. Yeah, this doesn't really take advantage of that many. That many banned cards, does it? As foretold, the anime version. Are the anime cards a draw for you? Are you going to... Like, so if you're seeking out cards, the the anime art is pretty is pretty adorable, isn't it? Um, is that something you actually seek out to, like, bling out your decks? I know you do, Doug. You're, you're one of the... You're kind of on the crim, the crim scale. Where I'm sure if you're someone who really loves anime, then it's then it's something that uh, is going to be easy to easy to go for. Like I'm curious where they fall in the where they fall in the scale essentially. We have so many different card styles these days, so there's so many there's so many different options. The question is where. Where does anime fit amongst like the all the various frames, all the secret layer versions? Is that one of the best? One of the one of the worst? Somewhere in between? I think that's the that's the interesting question. Hmm. I guess Ragavan is fine. Like a couple of Ragavans. I feel like we need more bodies. I don't know what to play to just give us more bodies in the early game. We have a new donation from Twitch and how. Hey, Seth, I want to ask if you ever plan on doing some sort of Gandalf the White modern or historic deck. Gandalf a Monicon would be great. Ah, yes, Gandalf has been... Thank you so much for the donation. I don't know if I really want to play Ornithopter. <laughs> Gandalf has been on my has been on my list. I just haven't actually got to it. I haven't actually got to it yet. Oh, Once Upon a Time seems good. Yeah, Once Upon a Time does. And that gets us another band card. We can probably play just 20 lands, I bet. We don't actually need blue mana. We all, all we need is Mardu mana. I mean this seems this seems reasonable. I think this could work. So a bunch of mana dorks. Season Pyromancer, Agent of Treachery. Wait. Elish Norn's not human, right? Yeah, just Phyrexian. Elish, hitting Elish Norn Agent of Treachery would be even more hilarious, but apparently that's not going to work. All right, let's let's add some lands and see. Is Winota busted when there's no ban list? That's the, that's the true question. Uh, so, mana base... Are there any special lands we want to be adding? Corneas, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I guess actually we're kind of like all the colors, aren't we? 
I guess we do need white for Winona, though a delighted halfling helps. So actually, hmm, is Bowmaster's a problem? Is that too greedy? We'll be fine, right? We're going to be fine. Sri Lanka! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why goose over the other two drop elves? Uh, it flies and it fixes our mana. I feel like if we're going to be four colors, the mana fixing is actually like kind of relevant. So we're not going to try to cast Agent of Treachery. That's not on our list. But we do need to be white mana, black mana, green mana red mana mm. so we need mostly green a little white no birds of paradise uh paradise somehow i don't know how they managed to i don't know how we've managed to have like five years of arena with no <laughs> with no birds of paradise that's kind of actually actually wild to think about um so blue we're not gonna worry about we want everything mostly to make green you need mana dorks that are two mana to eldritch evolution into winota uh, so you think we should hmm so you have pyromancer or bow masters is that enough is that is that enough to actually find the Winotas? That's the, I guess that's the question. I feel like we gotta make sure the deck's fast, but I guess we can't play Winota on turn two anyway. So, so maybe that's fine if we play more two mana mana dorks because we can't we can't run it out yet anyway. Hmm. But we are playing Remember against a lot of turn two channelers. People that are just like really going for it. We have a new donation from Doug Dane Wildfire. Uh, when it comes to special art styles, it depends on the deck. I really want anime kinder discovery for my daughter's Alea Anthem Stacks deck, but I for this prefer the storybook rustic study for my Riku deck. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Thank you for the donation, Doug. I guess that makes sense that when it comes down to it, it's kinda Kind of about the flavor that you're going for, right? That kind of, that's kind of what determines it. Maybe we go Mana Confluence. I feel like this format's so broken that losing a little life from Mana Confluence probably doesn't matter. So do we need two Mana Mana Dorks? Do we need two Mana Mana Dorks to have more things to Eldritch Evolution? So we gotta play like Paradise Druid or something? I mean, we could play Paradise Druid. I guess that's probably the best one over like some of the geese. How many lands do we have? 20. Although I guess Once Upon a Time does help us. Maybe we don't play Blade Historian. I don't know if Blade Historian is actually necessary. Let's do, let's try this. That gets us a couple more two drops. All right, let's 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 give Winota a try. Can Winota actually work with no bannings? What's everyone's thoughts on Up the Beanstalk? So Up the Beanstalk is... Is that the two-man enchantment that uh, draws cards? So I think that Up the Beanstalk is... Is a potentially playable... A potentially playable card. Wait, why won't you let me play this? This is no ban list week. Oh, is it because of this forest? I'm so confused. We should be able to play this, right? It's all access, Watsy. Huh? Am I not in the right event? <laughs> wizards, wizards, have I been deceived? Okay, it's the right event. Winota, why? It's gotta be this this forest i guess <laughs> all access unless you want to play this one forest <laughs> that's that's a, over the line over the ah that really was it <laughs> all all access except for that forest <laughs> you can't you can't actually play that special art forest so up a beanstalk two mana enchantment when it etbs 
Or when you cast a spell with Mana Vagary 5 or Greater, draw a card. So, the thing I like about it is it draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Things that cheaply cycle... And we kind of want both of these in our deck. You know, we're actually just going to mulligan this. Well, that is that is some Winotas. That is many Winotas. This Delighted Halfling doesn't help us season Pyromancer. What? This event. <laughs> this event. <laughs> this event. All right, opponent. Many partings. Search for a basic land, make a food. Yeah, got us. So... I don't think it's going to trigger as often as people think the five mana value part. Charge through. I don't think the five mana value part is going to trigger nearly as much as people think. But I don't think that actually really matters either because... Because it cycles when it enters the battlefield. So the, the floor is high enough that I think it's going to be a good card. I don't know if people will actually... Oh, all right, well, I guess it's... I guess it's Winota time. We only get one trigger. But it's an Agent of Treachery. Alright, well I guess if you're only going to get one trigger, that's a, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> here we come! Here we come! Does Halfling actually do anything here? It can only fix and protect Winota. I mean it ramps. It does ramp us. It doesn't die to Bowmasters. It does ramp us. The fixing's a little, like, medium. But I think that's okay. And opponent. <laughs> Learning about Ancient of Treachery. We didn't even see anything good from our opponent. We <laughs> didn't even see anything good, but it was good enough. It's also a non-human. So it, it does a, it does attacking stuff with Winota. I mean, one thing I've learned is, like, it's just very good. No one plays Field of the Dead. I feel like Field of the Dead... So I think there is a good Field of the Dead deck. It's probably a control... I, I can't help shake the feeling that there's probably a, a control deck that could be very, very good to even, like, dominate in this format. But no one, or very few people, I'm sure there's some crims out there, but it seems like no one wants to play that deck. <laughs> everyone everyone wants to try to do, like, the cool combo -y things, and they're trying to, like, Oko and channel, and, and no one's really... Uh, Hmm. How can we get as many bodies on the battlefield? I guess we Ragavan. Yes. Oh, this is going to be really good. So we play Ragavan. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be really good. So we Ragavan. Oh, we Flash and Bowmasters. Yeah. Ragavan, Flash and Bowmasters. Eldritch Evolution. Winota. G G, don't channel us. Please don't channel us, opponent. Don't channel us. Wait, new Corvald. Are they still revealing cards? Is the Watsi stream still going? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Sap Booster exclusives. Corvald Gleeful Gutten. A million mana. Probably better known as eight for a four four. Cause one less to cast for each card type among permanents you have sacrificed this turn interesting flying tremble haze when it deals combat damage to a player put x counters on it and draw x cards where x is a number of permanent types among cards in your graveyard well it is much less broken than original corvald i would say it seems like a fun build around commander though so if you can sack enough permanent types this can get down to a pretty low cost and then it hits, and you get a bunch of counters, draw a bunch of guards. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's as busted as the original. All right, so opponent's going to Elkar Ragavan. But I do think it seems like a really fun commander to build around. Uh, just so it's clear with that one, that is a... That is a, a set booster card. So it is not standard legal. It is uh, commander commander only. Well, uh, opponent. It's a nice Oko you have over there. However, we have a Winota. And we have three creatures here on turn three. Uh, attack your... Actually, I guess we go for the win. Whatever. Face, face, face. Let's see what we hit. Three triggers. Trigger number one. Oh, Angry Estimum Rotter, double it up, go at your face. Trigger number two, 
Uh, Season Pyromancer. Go at your face. Discard so Wow, Winota seems good. Trigger three. Agent of Treachery. Yes, that's a nice Oko. And uh, also go at your face. Oh. Oops. Well, I think we did it. <laughs> Didn't even need the double damage. Didn't even need the double damage. Did you see the court cards? I did not see the court cards. Let me let me see if they're up anywhere yet. If they're if they're posted, they're not on the site yet. I will. Are, are they actually cool? Are they worth? Are they worth searching out? Oh, I see. Court, court. All right. Let's see. Let's see these court cards. So these are these are commander cards, right? These are commander cards. Court of Garenbrig, yeah. Uh, so commander only. Court of Garenbrig, four mana or three mana, four mana, three mana. Green card enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. If the beginning of your upkeep, distribute two plus one plus one counters among two target creatures. Then, if you're the monarch, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Court of Embereth, four mana. Red, ETB, you can become the monarch. Limiting your upkeep, create a 3 1 red knight creature token. If you're the monarch, it deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of creatures you control. Court of Lockwain, four mana, black one. ETB monarch, limiting your upkeep, top card of your opponent's library, exile it. You can play it as long as it remains exiled and use mana of any type to cast it. If you're the monarch, until the end of the next turn, you may cast a spell from among the exiled cards without paying its mana cost. People are going to like that card. People are going to play that one a lot. Court of Vantress. Four mana. Blue. ETB Monarch. Beating your upkeep. Choose up to one target enchantment or artifact. If you're the Monarch, create a token that's a copy of it. If you're not the Monarch, you may have Court of Vantress become a copy of it, but it has this ability. And then Court of Ardenvale. Four mana. White. ETB Monarch. Beating your upkeep. Return a target permanent with mana value a uh, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from a graveyard to your hand. If you're the monarch, return it to the battlefield instead. Why is a green one one less mana is a good question. I mean, those cards are sweet. Monarch is probably my favorite. <laughs> probably my favorite uh, commander multiplayer mechanic. So I'm glad to see more cards that just put the monarch in play. Honestly, if I had my choice, I would have, I would have every... 1200 points for nothing. Did I did I miss something? Die on the phone. Um I would have the commander games just start with the monarch. I'm I'm looking back die on the phone to find your to find your uh, your post. I wasn't trying to miss your tweets or miss your post. Hey Seth, I heard Spring Spike wanted to Baldur's Gate with some MTG streamers. Uh, aspiring Spike wanted to Baldur's Gate with some MTG streamers. Would you hope the post gets through in time? Who? Uh, maybe I'd have to. I'd have to talk to Spike. I've actually never played the Baldur's Gate game, so I don't know. I don't know if I would be the. I don't know if I'd be the best option for it. But uh, it could be fun to try. It seems like a lot of people like the game. Yeah, the Corvald. We looked at the Corvald. Uh, we looked at the Corvald briefly. The Corvald does seem pretty sweet. Oh, but there's another. Another new legend here. Bernard, Ginger Sculptor, forming a bant 3-3. Each creature you control that's a food or a golem has plus two, plus two, and trample. Oh, we missed it. The Throne of Eldorade. Five mana. ETB chooses a color. Add four mana of the chosen color. Spend it only to cast monocolored spells of that color. Pay three. Tap it. Draw two cards. Spend this a mana only to... Wait. <laughs> Pay three. Tap it. Draw two cards. Spend this mana... Spend only the mana of the chosen color to activate this ability. So basically, mono color support, five mana to make four mana, but you can only cast mono colored spells with it of a specific color. And then three mana to draw two, but you can only use mana of that color. I mean, that's a really good card for mono colored commander decks, right? If you're playing like mono white mono any mono color mono green is probably the worst because you don't need it but it's pretty uh it's pretty nice that it comes into play untapped that's kind of the that's kind of the wild part like it comes into play untapped so once you get to five mana this kind of only costs one mana because you can immediately tap it to make four mana and cast a mono colored spell that to me looks like a a mono color staple essentially in commander like 
The thing is, I think people are going to underestimate, like, the fact that you really can only play this in a monocolor deck. Like, I wouldn't even play this in a two-color deck. I think it's too restricted. I, I don't think it's going to work out the way you want to. So I think you literally have to only be monocolored. Only be monocolored. But if you're monocolored, I don't know why you wouldn't just put this in any commander deck that's monocolored. Yeah, that's one thing I'd like to see more of. I would like to see more of that in standard as well. Like, I, I would like to, in modern, actually in every format, like, I wouldn't mind. So, I've heard some people be like, oh, ban fetch lands. Or don't let them on arena. Like, ban them in historic when they come to arena. I don't want to see wizards ban cards to make the format more monocolored. I don't think that's a good way to go about it. I would like to see more of this, though. Like, cards that are pushed in strong, but only work if you're monocolored. That push you in that direction. We saw that in old Eldraine with, like, uh, the animate mechanic. But animate was just, like, really clunky and not very powerful but they were trying to support the monocolor deck so i feel like uh i feel like this is a really nice direction to go it's so easy look at edh rec look at edh rec real quick just look at the most played commanders uh you look at the top commanders they're i mean four color two color five color two color two color three color five color three color three color two color mono color so number 11 first mono colored three color two color five color three color five color three color four color like people just want to play all the yeah that's what commander is now like the man is good people like playing all the cool things so you just play five color you throw everything in there and that's great if that's how you, I like playing five color soup commander too. Uh, but I I would really love to see more cards like that that actually reward you. Okay, you're playing a mono color deck. Here's this really really strong card that will only work for you. Your Atrox is not going to play it. Kenra can't. Uh, Kenra is not going to play it. Joda is not going to play it. This is a card that's just for you. So uh, I hope we see I hope we see more of that in the future. I think that's a good direction to go. So anyway, uh, that's the end of the that's the end of the stream. They're doing the Q and A. If you want to watch the Q and A, uh, jump over to the to the Watsi site. I think these uh, I think these Monarch enchantments are are pretty decent. I like more Monarch. I would say so. This one's basically Sun Titan. If you're the Monarch, that one maybe intrigues me less, but still like. It's not non-land permanent, so this can get back a land every turn, so get back the same fetch land. Uh, that actually seems pretty powerful. Vantress, eh, I mean, I guess it's cool. Copying things is always fun. You really want to be the monarch, though. Turning this into a copy of something, I think, is way less appealing than making a copy of that something because then you get the etb trigger if you're making a new copy of it so this one really rewards you for being the monarch lock Wayne, i guess is sort of like that although really you get to draw an extra card every turn and you're drawing it from your opponent's deck so even if you're not the monarch it's perfectly fine like it's a four mana painless frexian arena that hits your opponent's deck if you are the monarch and you get to cast those cards for free then this card's kind of uh, kind of bonkers. I can imagine myself playing this in a lot of decks. I can imagine me jamming this in many, many, in many, many decks. Like I, I just I love my yeah. The art is pretty spectacular too. I don't know who Julie Dillon is, but the art on that's really good. Uh, so I can imagine playing that in a lot of decks. Court of Embrith. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is actually probably a very powerful one because uh, see like Perforo style decks or Cranko style decks, red is really good at going wide. So making a 3-1 knight, whatever, that's like pretty dull. Like sure, that's kind of like a useless creature in commander though. However, dealing X damage to each opponent where X is the number of creatures you control, that could just be wrecking people and closing out the game. So if you're a deck that can maintain the monarch and like Cranko off and just make a ton of bodies, this could actually be an interesting finish and then the green one's cool because it just doubles it doubles up your uh doubles up your uh counters on things which is sweet i don't know how much they'll show up in legacy some of them might it could be possible three one can be skull clamp that is that is an upside you need to do combat damage to get the monarch though it would be broken if you could get outside of combat i mean so to get the monarch you need to deal combat damage or uh, just keep playing Monarch cards. And we're getting more and more Monarch cards. So I imagine... I imagine that's going to be the easiest way to turn some of those on is... Uh, just play things that can that can make you the monarch and that overrides everything so you just uh you play a spell that makes you the monarch again to steal it back Aegeus Bajoran welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super thank you thank you thank you thank you yeah the only problem is like a three one is just not 
much in Commander. Like, this is a format where Beast Within is, like, one of the best removal spells because a 3-3 three, three is just so harmless that no one cares. <laughs> so I don't think making a 3-1, unless you're going to synergize with it. If you're going to synergize with it where you're, like, skull clamping at every turn or something, uh, doubling it with doubling season, then then we're talking. But if you're just, like, a fair 3-1 is kind of nothing, essentially. I just want to say thanks for the shout-out on YouTube. Uh, tried to comment, but YouTube wasn't working. Actually, uh, that I actually wasn't the deck creator, and Morbid Mind from the Artisan Discord deserves most of the credit. Oh, well, Rooker, I will I will make sure if uh, that comes up in the future to try to let people know. Thanks for, for clarifying. Uh, yeah, we started to read... We started to read Bernard, and then it scrolled off screen. All right, last card, and then... And then I definitely got to go do the spoiler video because now we do have a lot of cards. I was worried we weren't going to have enough earlier, but now we have many, many. So uh, Bernard Ginger Sculpture. Bant, this is another commander card. Bant Legend. Four mana, three, three. Each creature that's a food or golem gets plus two, plus two, and has trample. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you can exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a one, one food golem artifact creature in addition to its other types, and you can tag it. Ooh. Oh, that's a cool flavor card. He's like turning things into actual food. That card actually seems very fun. That's a cool take on a food commander. So... You play your Muldrifter, and then your Muldrifter dies. You exile it. You get a 1-1 one, one food token copy of it. Reuses the ETB, so it's kind of a Panharmonicon as your creatures die. That might be my favorite commander from the set so far. <laughs> I definitely... Or you could just build Golem Tribal, like play all the Golems and go that direction. That's a really sweet card. That's a super, super cool... That's a super, super cool design. I really, I really like that card. That might be my favorite new commander from the set so far. Food Fight. Two mana, this is back to standard. Two mana enchantment. Artifacts you control have. Pay two, sack it. Deal damage to any target equal to one plus the number of permanents named Food Fight you control. Wait, so if you have this, artifacts have two, sack it, deal two damage to any target. If you get two of them, it's three to any target. We do have ways to reduce the cost, right? If you have, like, Zerta or something, so you can sack it for one less. I mean, that's actually... That seems like a good against the odds card. At least it seems like a good against the odds card. The new... Wow, wait, they bumped Disdainful Stroke up to Uncommon? I wonder why. I mean, it really only matters for Limited, right? But I'm pretty sure... Oh, it was Uncommon in... Wait, wasn't this always a common? Did they recently? Guilds of Ravnica. Common. So they upshifted it in Streets of New Capenna? What about Keldheim? Common. I wonder why they I wonder why they upshifted it. Huh. Yeah, that is a cool design how it rewards you. We were just talking about uh the the blue court. And how it can copy enchantments. This is a kind of card. If you can copy it a bunch, all of a sudden, one one artifact being sacked is going to be a ridiculous amount of damage. Uh, new Corvald, eight mana four four, but it costs one less to cast for each card type among permanents you sacrifice this turn. So essentially, creature, planeswalker, land, artifact, enchantment, battle. Technically, so you could get it down to what three mana. You could get rid of all the colorless mana. Four four flying trample haste when deals combat damage to a player. Put X counters on it and draw X cards where X is the number of permanent types among cards in your graveyard. So it can potentially be a three mana hasty four four. Hit your opponent. You get five counters on it, so it becomes a nine nine and draw five cards. I think compared to compared to old Corvald, it's much less comboy. I would say, and uh, but still very powerful. If you can build a deck that can consistently reduce the cost and get all the permanent types in the graveyard, still a very a very strong card. It can come down early, can draw you a ton of cards, can get big very quickly. So I think that's good because I think original original Corvald I think is actually kind of unfun. Essentially, original Corvald just too too easy to kind of combo with. But anyway, everyone, yeah, Oracle. Old Carvel, that whole Brawl series, little little over the top. Anyway, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our stream. So what is the answer to our original question? What is the most busted deck on Magic Arena? And here's my, here's my takeaway. 
I would say the most busted deck is probably Channel. And if you want to play this event, I think you want to plan for that. Thought Seizes, Spell Pierces, because a lot of people are doing the doing the channel thing. And the channel thing is very, 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 very strong in this format. If I had to do this format over again, I would probably just ban channel and trickery. And I think the format might be more interesting than I think the format would be more interesting if rather than turn to channel, a deck like natural order elves was an option like uh, natural order elves can also do something very powerful you natural order out a crater hoof on like turn three the problem is if you're getting channeled on turn two it's honestly just too fair as weird as that sounds like eh, like your turn three crater hoof just doesn't beat a turn two channel ulamog or whatever so i feel like it would maybe open up or like the storm deck dragon storms also kind of like that where dragon storm can go infinite most reasonably around turn three but again if you're getting channeled turn two so i would love to see this format with best of three being an option so you could play hate cards in your sideboard and with channel in specific band but i think the format's really unique if you're looking for something different and you want to try it out i i think this team or tempo deck's actually really good as far as fair decks we did all the combo -y stuff channels busted all that stuff's busted but as far as the fair decks just like Oko is ridiculous. The Dragon Rage Channel or Ragavan, good finishers. You get a bunch of counters to stop the broken stuff. Get a bunch of card draw. Get a pretty fast clock. This deck actually felt like a legacy tempo deck almost. So I wish you could challenge some friends in the format and find funny stuff. Yeah, the only problem is you don't get all the cards. You can cham challenge friends, but... I remember this from when me and Phil did that video a while ago. We had to like spend our wild cards on like Ragavan style cards, cards that are banned in literally all the formats. So you're just throwing your wild cards away on demonic tutors and so forth to play the format. So I'm glad they made it all access. That's the one, the one challenge with playing with your friends. But anyway, I'm off to make a spoiler video. Reminders on the way out the door. Replay YouTube. That's we invite all the old videos, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Spoiler video coming up shortly. I'm sure uh, Tomer will be doing one focused on commander on the commander youtube so check that out on the commander youtube a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them from cardkingdom.com slash goldfish and most importantly thank you to all of you i know change the schedule today another early stream doing things a little bit nor uh, sooner than normal but we'll get back to normal on thursday thanks for hanging out everyone i love y'all i hope you have an amazing day and a great weekend and i will see you on thursday for some more streaming so until then everyone be good and i will talk to you soon